Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to yet again another fantastic indie creator interview. It is your Caped Crusader, Cody, and we are keeping it geekly with our two new friends, Frankie Washington and Matt Blair. We're here to break down Kaiju and Cowboys issue number one and everything right. in between. Matt and Frankie, how are you guys doing? What's up? Doing good, doing good. Yeah, uh, hello. welcome, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am excited to have the opportunity to uh, be breaking this down with the uh, the writer and the artist, you know, the creator, co-creator. Yeah. Uh, before we get into the 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 guts of it, let's break down who you guys are individually. Like, how did you guys come into the indie comic scene? Oh, boy. Matt, do you want to handle that? Start it off? Or? All right. Uh, All right, so, sure, Okay, yeah, sure, I'll go first. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, I... I'm a I'm a relative newcomer to uh, the indie comic scene and comics in general. Like when I was a kid, I you know I wasn't raised around comics all that much, but around high school and college, I started you know like I was really into like Greek and Roman mythology and history and all that stuff. And, you know, when I was in high school, I started realizing, oh, hey, wait a minute, you know, th these these comic books and like these superheroes and these stories, like, you know, they're, you know, they're remarkably similar to what, you know, what I like and what I enjoy. And I, you know, the, the MCU happened and I was like, oh, this is really deep and really interesting. So, you know, let's, you know, learn a, learn a bit about this. And then I, I remember... I don't remember the exact day, but I remember remember the exact moment. I was uh, it was after I graduated in co from college, and I was uh, living at home with my parents, and I was broke. I was miserable, and I thought to myself, "I'm going to write a comic book." You know, <laughs> how hard could it be? I'm going to make you myself know, even it, more broke. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, why not? And. Uh, I, I didn't realize, you know, what 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 went into it. And uh, spoiler alert: it's incredibly difficult. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I you know I, I made the decision to be like, you know, you know, this is what I want to do with my life. You know, let let's you know let's keep going and let's see where this can where this can go. And so, you know, I got my you know got my act together a little bit, and then I reached out to Frankie uh, for for a project that never really got off the ground but then i was like you know i have you know i have this webcomic idea and then frankie reached out to me and that sort of kicked off the relationship that we've had for about yeah. six Ooh. what six years going on seven <laughs> yeah six years going on seven <laughs> yeah so uh, what was that? What was that first uh, initial idea, though? I i'm curious about that uh when, when you guys first initially uh, tried to work together well the 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 first comic idea that it came up with it, it was like this sci-fi mech suit thing that never really got anywhere uh it will it will uh you know it, when things catch on uh but uh the, the the idea that frankie uh really frankie and i really clicked on was a web comic called the secret lives of villains yep. it was basically a lot of people yeah. check it out. Yeah. Yeah. It was basically a uh, family sitcom, but they're all super villains. And yep. so, like, you know, the usual tropes and, like, you know, the, you know, coming of age and, like, you know, the, the bad neighbors, but, you know, they're all super villains. <laughs> I love it, though. I love it. I'm telling you, it, a lot of other people loved it, too. It was on Tapas and Webtoon, wasn't it? Yeah. It's still up there. It's, it's still up there, there if you yeah, want to check it out. Check it out. Yeah, um, give me one second. Yeah. I need to uh, turn Frankie up just a notch. Just okay. a notch. Give me one All second. Right. We have J. Michael Miller on YouTube stopping in to say this looks interesting. Yes, you haven't even seen Look. anything, Jay. You're, you're just looking at the title right now in the corner. <laughs> this thing gets welcome. awesome. Yeah, this gets awesome. Yeah, welcome, Jay. How you doing? Good morning. So, Hello. Matt, Matt, sorry about the interruption. Uh, go ahead. No worries. No worries. You know, always time to greet someone who's interested. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, so... You know that happened that you know that went on for a while and yeah. you know i i can't speak to what frankie what was going on with frankie but i was you know i was working i you know i moved you mm -hmm. know i i you know frankie and i used to be uh close to uh, neighbors like i used to live in massachusetts then i moved to yeah. the west coast yeah. and then um 
and then like you know I, I knew that Frankie was a big kaiju fan and I knew yeah. that Frankie was you know you know you know loved you know Godzilla and you know the, the the monsters and all that and like I was never a big kaiju fan but but eventually what happened was I was like you know I've been working with this guy for a long time you know he's been doing all this artwork for the story that i want to tell maybe i should create a story that frankie wants to tell wow uh, because i love that yeah, I'm I'm just love hearing that this. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah because <laughs> there, there is there is nothing <laughs> greater over here. that's a kodiak <laughs> moment right now greater than <laughs> seeing an artist <laughs> doing something that they yeah. are passionate about and, the, yeah. and that, that, that they care about and so I was like, you know, hey, Frankie, I got this idea for a kaiju story. And that's wow. when we created um, <coughs> a, a series of short stories um, uh, called uh, K uh, Team KS1, Kaiju Squad 1. Yes, yes. Uh, and then, so that happened, that picked up a little bit. Uh, but then Frankie emailed me saying, you know, hey, we'd like to see, uh, hey, do you think we could do like a kaiju western? Oh, and I was the one who said that? Yeah, can, yeah, you oh, were. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't delete wow. my emails. I'm getting old, man. It's like my memory's like, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, well, you, okay. you have to, I, I remember all this for this exact reason. So, you know. So you, guys, have... you, guys, you guys are hearing it first. So when it becomes a big film. <laughs> <laughs> you know exactly like, oh, go when it happens yeah, 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 yeah. and why it, it happens. It. <laughs> yes. No, I, all, I I love it know. so much uh, that you wanted to uh, you know give give something back to the artist. I mean, yeah. I think that's something that you know we're we're starting to see a lot more in the indie community. But they, to hear that you you wanted to make sure you you did you know you did something for him just as much yeah, as he's wow. doing something for you. That's that's such an awesome relationship. Yeah, I mean, you know, like I said, it's been you know, six years going on seven, and you know we you know you don't. <laughs> you don't last that long and not like understand, you know, have a, get an understanding of what, what that's like. Um, but yeah. Uh, and that, that takes us to uh, today. And, you know, Frankie emailed me asking to, you know, about a Kaiju Western. And then I was like, okay, you know, a cowboy going up against Godzilla. That'd be cool. Uh, you know, we couldn't have a human do it. So, you know, let's have a robot do it yeah, and so like you know yeah. yeah and so then i you know then i emailed you like a, a brief you know description of like you know hey you know robot cowboy hat duster what do you think and then your exact words were oh my god i love this yeah. and so that's how that was born <laughs> yeah yeah my brain and then my brain sparked off the design like i had the design in my head i was like i'm gonna take three of the things that i love the most and i was like i love jet jaguar i like the way jet jaguar looks Mm -hmm. Godzilla, Showa era, and then Clint Eastwood, the, the whole trilogy, the man with no name. And then I said, Machine Man, the Jack Kirby run. The, let me, I got to stress that the Jack Kirby run of Machine Man. And I said, let me see if I can merge that all together to make one character. And that's that what is that so be. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's so yeah. awesome. We have uh, Jeremy Deal over on YouTube saying, I can see a Kaiju Western as a movie that people would want to see. Yeah, absolutely. I yeah, think it, we can too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, can you imagine a showdown at noon, like, just with a kaiju and a, a robot? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we totally can. I mean, man, He's like, it happens. <laughs> it could happen. No, uh, happen. so so with Matt laying the foundation, Frankie, what about you? What's what's your start into oh, uh, the boy. indie indie com comic uh, scene, you know? I, I, I'm about to drag some ears. Uh, for me, uh, my first comic book came because um, I went to art school. And uh, I went to art school in 1988, went in. It was a three-year program for commercial illustration. Uh, and on my last year, 1991, I decided to do uh, self-publish my own comic. And the comic was called Peace. And um, a lot of people, people in Boston, I, you know, I grew up in Boston. So a lot of people who were around that time, they, they remember Peace. It was on newsprint. Um, I plan on, I have my own YouTube channel. So I plan on, I, I show a lot of my work. So I plan on recapping. I'm going to show all the old stuff. Um, I cringe at the artwork that I did, but I think it's important. <laughs> I do it because I want artists who, who are aspiring to mm -hmm. get into the field to see the journey um, from, from the place where I started to the place where I'm at now and where I'm, I plan on pushing further. So anyway, I did peace. And then after that, um, I got some gigs. I started getting, get, getting um, I, you know, got into doing some gigs, paid gigs, uh, worked in production for a film, worked on two films, uh, motion pictures. And then um, 
I was able to get into a local um, animation studio that was looking for a, uh, a storyboard artist and concept artist. And so once I got into the animation field, because the production field was interesting, but a lot of the people in the production field what bothered me um, was that they weren't um, they weren't artists. You know what I mean? They were just people who they they liked my work, but I felt like I wasn't getting that kind of um, tutelage from people who were creative, like people who would be able to say, "Hey, look, uh, that sucks." <laughs> you know, and then you can learn. I mean, I need that's the kind of person I am. I, I tend to love stuff where someone comes to me and goes, "Boom," you know, "Hey, Frank, you need to do this." You need to, I can take stuff like that. So yeah, once I got into animation. And I started being surrounded by all these tremendous artists. I mean, animators, that were artists, directors, creative people. I mean, sculptors. I mean, people who were just so many various eclectic styles. My brain was like, oh my God, you know, I'm learning stuff here. I thought I was knowing things. It was like, no, 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 you're learning more. And I also began to appreciate the team, that mm -hmm. whole team assembly kind of thing. Um, even with the film, when I worked on the films, um, it was usually me with the director, and and then dealing with the uh, producers and stuff like that but it was never enough it wasn't like how it was with the animation studio where i was i had roommates who were animators and many of them went off to do some work on like um adventure time and stuff like that wow so, yeah yeah a couple of my roommates andy Vistano, he worked on adventure time i think he got like uh, some kind of award and a couple other guys uh, king of the hill so i i was with these guys i roomed with them and so i learned a lot from them and so but i also respected that fact that teamwork so then afterwards i got out of that was looking around for work and then I got into advertising, which advertising in the field is like the echelon of like, if you want to make money as an artist, advertising was it, especially in the 90s. It was a great, a great way to make money. I learned a lot. It was very hardcore kind of business. Definitely not like comic books where in advertising, it's like, we need you to do 100 storyboards in 24 hours and get it done. Wow. You know? And if you don't get it done, you don't get the, your your phone will ring. So it's yeah, like you don't have of, a job anymore. Yeah, you don't have a job, it's, and, and they'll do it with a smile on their face. They're not gonna try to do it behind your back. They'll be like, "Oh, the phone's not ringing because you didn't get the job done." Ha <laughs> You know that kind of thing. So that is so learned, brutal, though. It, it's brutal, but I'm gonna tell you one thing. It 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 um it helped me a lot. It really helped me. It actually it, 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 it as I the stuff that I learned from a animation. Then once I got into advertising, it was like being with the parents, the grown ups, and they were like, "Hey, you want to play on this field?" then you got to learn the next level. So it was almost like I kept learning these different things. I'm learning how to uh, sell myself. So it was not sell myself, but sell my skills and being able to um, sit in meetings, understanding about um, promotion, marketing, um, the power of marketing, the power of getting your work out there. Because that's one of the things that, and that, that indie um, creators are hurting sometimes because they'll create something that's fantastic and incredible, but they don't know how to market. They don't know how to promote. They don't know how to put the right things out there. They don't know the right words to put out there to express what they're doing to potential buyers, backers, readers. So I learned a lot of this stuff just by, you know, working for various agencies, talking to creative directors, talking to um, copywriters, sitting in on meetings, those kind of things. So I, I worked in it for many years. And then off and on, I would do various comic books. Like um, I would say at this point that Matthew as a partner has been one of my longest partners relationships. Um, I've worked on other comic book projects in which um, um, the, the the staying power wasn't that strong. Mm -hmm. And they always have left me with that kind of gut wrenching, like it wasn't completed because I am, I'm a passionate artist. I'm one of those old school artists where like, remember back in the day, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be turning 52 this month. So back in the day, I remember graffiti artists, right? And a graffiti, not a tagger, but a graffiti artist like an artist who puts beautiful artwork on a wall and walks away and goes, oh, and then pretty much people can walk and look at it mm -hmm. and then they can decide whether or not they like it or not. That's the kind of artist I am. I'm very passionate with that. And so when I work with someone, um, I'm praying that they have the same level of passion I have so that we're going to get to the finish line, regardless of what. Like if I look over at you and say we're doing a Boston Marathon and we started off at a good sprint, but then when we get to Heartbreak Hill, we're both walking and breathing hard. I just want to look in your eyes and see if you got what it takes the next to make the next round so we, even if we have to walk across that line we'll walk it together wow That's what I want. and i feel and i feel that with matthew so there you go i do i honestly do. you guys oh, have matthew. something yeah. like unique with each other we're, we're, I, I, I love I, I love this too you're both new, like oh I told, go on I told, I told matthew that we might we might be the new version of um jack and stan yeah yeah because, yeah we're the new version of that because i think that with jack and stan they they had a moment of, of incredible magic that went on 
And I think that, and, and now that I've looked at it years later, I don't blame Stan Lee for a lot of stuff because honestly, Jack Kirby was a grown man. I think Jack Kirby um, understood the business enough. He, he, he just didn't, I don't think he had a good understanding of his own value. And I think that if he had what Stan Lee had, he could have stepped right into those rooms and said, look, I'm not doing anything <laughs> because I'm Jack Kirby. And if yeah. you want me to do something, pay me my money. Yeah. And I honestly think he could have, I think he could have done that, but you know, he just didn't have it. And, and Stan Lee had it. Stan Lee was able to walk in and say, well, I know I'm writing good stories. So <laughs> hey, yo. pay me. Hey, yo. And, and that's fair. So I feel like with me and me and uh, Matthew is that we talk, we have those kind of talks and we go, Hey, look, man, you know, we, we, this is us. That's why anytime people come to me and they're always talking, you know, about Kaiser Complex, I'm like, no, no, no. I always put Matthew in there because I can't, I cannot do this without Matthew. And Matthew can't do this without me. No, I cannot. Know? And so the thing is that in some of my previous um, books that I worked on, um, relationships got strained because of things. And um, and I don't put all the blame. It's not a blame on the other person or anything like that. It's just that it just got strained. And a lot of projects got in, uncompleted. I've worked on a lot of comic book projects. Um, I have a bibliography. It's a lot. It's a massive sheet of all a lot of the comic book projects that I've worked on, but just they never, they just never made it. And so with Codgers and Cowboys, uh, me and Matthew talked and we said the 12 issue incentive to start off. I mean, if, if things that if fandom comes out for us and they love it and they're passionate and they, they're into it, then we'll, we'll see where the next step takes us. But 12 issues, that's Bronze Age comic book level stuff. I know the mm. newbies, I know the new fans, I know since, since the mid 90s, everybody started going to the four issue limited series. You know that whole thing and, and and cut them down but we're saying we want to try for the long story because we believe in it we believe that to invest for people to invest in something they need to have something longevity i want to bring the addiction of comic books back i'll be part of that there's nothing and, wrong with that no and, i love it and don't worry to anyone who is might be worried about uh you know the the series sagging in the middle and slowing down we do not do that we don't no. uh no um, I, I believe decompression was a, a thing that, and like decompression writing for a trade for the trade is like a, a, is a relatively modern trend in comic books mm -hmm. in general. Yeah, and um, we don't do that. No. Uh, each issue, uh, you know, you know, you know, I I don't have the history that Frankie has. I don't have uh, you know, the the you know the, the professional experience, but you know, I I, I learned. Uh, you know, yeah. I, I, you know, yeah. I, the, the, the six years I've worked with Frankie, it, it, it hasn't just been the webcomic. It's been, you know, studying the, the culture, studying the business. Mm -hmm. I'm a huge history fan. So mm -hmm. like the, the history of comics is absolutely yep. fascinating. Yes. Yes. Uh, and so, you know, each, each issue, like, you know, I, I, I made a promise to myself. It's like, okay, 12 issues, plan it out, yep. you know, you know, uh, organize itself like that's 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 another thing that well, a lot of comic book creators don't do they don't you know they're not very well organized and they're not yes. very you know mm -hmm. production and, schedule yes <laughs> that's, a, a that's a key word schedule and like yeah <laughs> so you know stress it. Yep. yeah every every issue is it it, it 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 ties into the larger story but at the same time you know each issue is is an experience in, in and of its own yeah um like I, I it, it was my it was my goal to make you know each issue as entertaining as humanly possible yes. mm -hmm. so that you know even if you know you you give out at like issue six there's still you know you still get a satisfying it, it's still a satisfying yeah. book yep. so we have a we have oblivia over on twitch stopping in to hype up the chat welcome to the stream oblivia that is a hey. uh, my super hot girlfriend stopping in oh what's that <laughs> Ho hope works good for you uh <laughs> <laughs> so hello, hello. Let, with yeah. uh, with with uh, kaiju's and uh, cowboys, you know what are we seeing here? Are we seeing a creator, uh, you know, cr a creator uh, type of uh, kaiju, or are you are you working with uh, mainstream type of IPs? Like, are these your own creations? Like, what oh, are you trying to? Yeah. Oh yeah, this is, <laughs> yeah, that's, absolutely, it's, it's, absolutely yeah. our own thing. Yeah. So, well, uh, what's uh, what's the importance of creating your own type of uh, oh. kaiju IPs? You know, oh. what what's the importance in that? And, you know, how, how do you see it uh, weighing against more of the mainstream look on uh, Kaiju's? Oh, well, I mean, for me, 
I think the thing about it, because I, I constantly, I, I love listening, because that was the whole thing about what advertising is that you, for, for people, for advertisers to be able to shape a commercial, um, they have to listen. They have to be able to see how the market's trending. They have to see how people are looking toward a, a certain product or whatever. So I tend to watch stuff. I tend to see things. I watch things. I listen and, and whatever and, and try to get a gauge. One of the things I think that many of the um, Kaju fandom that I've seen um, that are out there talking about stuff, there's always this sense where they focus. It's almost like a, 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 um, a, a scope, a scope on the major ones like Godzilla mm -hmm. or Ultraman. Or, you know, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and that kind of stuff. Stuff that's been around, you know, so forth and so on. And, and I'm saying you don't have to look away. You don't have to turn away because you can still, because they're that powerful. They're so powerful that even if you turned your head to the side, you can still see it at the side of your eye. It's mm -hmm. Godzilla, you know? The thing about original IPs, like, um, like what we're doing, I mean, let's go back to the point of in the 50s. Because this is, I, I love watching a lot of the 50s horror movies. Remember the giant monster movies of the 50s? Those were kajus. The giant tarantula. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the, I think Black Scorpion. The Gila, I think there was a, the Gila monster. Them, the giant ants. That's a kaju movie. But it was an American kaju. I mean, I'm not even putting King Kong in there because everyone mm -hmm. knows King Kong. But <laughs> those were American forms. Hell, the, 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 um, the Colossal Man. The giant Colossal Man. You can almost put him in that same realm of the of the kaju and stuff like that the 50 foot woman these were american brands ips that were incredible the blob isn't is is a is a kaju in some fashion he's a big mass this massive mm -hmm. went about eating people and stuff like that so we have the capability as westerners to do that um not drawing shade on my on, on manga because i love manga i love anime as well but sometimes I see people only focusing, like their eyes can only zero in on that manga or either, or either it's the IPs. And I'm telling you, there are a lot of us here in the West that are creating very unique kind of stories and characters um, that is that goes hand in hand to the history of the Western um, Kaju monsters. Marvel Comics had their own giant monster books that Jack Kirby worked on. This mm -hmm. is this is why I say it's so important that we got to look at the history of these things because it has existed for a long, long time. We're just we're just the next the next um, people just coming along, you yeah. know. No, and, I guess round, yeah. I, I love how Frank was like, uh, "You guys remember those movies from the fifties?" I'm like, "Uh, no." Oh. <laughs> well, you, I'm <laughs> telling you, you're missing. You gotta. T I'm telling you, if you're a Kaju fan, I'm seriously. If you're a serious Kaju fan, please, 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 please. 50s, black and white, the them, the giant ants, food of the gods with the giant rats, H.G. Wells um, book, which I read, amazing, but food of the gods is another one, I mean, the colossal man, the 50 foot woman, the giant tarantula, which is terrifying, um, black scorpion, I mean, there's so many, there's just so many that they were doing back in the 50s, because they were like, hey, look at that, Japan is doing Godzilla, and they're doing Gamera, and they're doing all this other stuff. So let's see what America can do. And America came out. And America's, if you look at America's um, uh, kajus, they tend to be more real, real life kind of creatures mm -hmm. that just got big, you know, which is sometimes even more horrifying. Like it used so, to be an insect, you know? You ever see uh, Honey, I uh, um, Blew Up the Kids? Honey, I Shrunk the Shrunk Kids. The kid. Yeah, yeah, well, no, yeah there, 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 there was a one where they blew them up. Yeah. Yeah, but so, you're right. Well, he's, so he's would great. that be yeah, a kaiju? Right. Would we be in the kaiju realm in that area? I suppose. I mean, kaijus are strange, um, strange beasts. So anything I got to me, I've always considered anything that was like strange and unique, mm -hmm. um, especially if it's a giant kind of creature. I'd be like, oh, yeah, that's a kaiju. Why can't it be a kaiju? Why couldn't a troll? <laughs> why couldn't a troll be a kaiju? No, you and know? if you have never seen Honey, I Blew Up the Kids, missing out. That is a, a great, great one film. too. Holy, it's oh my god! Film. I yeah. shrunk the kids was good, but blew up the kids like. Like yeah. the dude, like he's su the kid's super huge and picks up like cars, like they were Hot Wheels, yeah. like actual yeah. cars. I loved it so much. Well, that was that was like Food of the Gods, the food, the movie that came out in the seventies. It was like they had the first one dealt with rats, a giant chicken. It, they tried. It was very loosely based on the H.G. Wells classic, the novel. But then they did a sequel where it dealt with a, a kid, because that was the whole point. The kid ends mm -hmm. up um, the cycle, whereas this weird material comes out the earth. These people start feeding it to their um, cattle. Or their cows and the chickens get it and the chickens grow big and they become man eaters i mean it was like that's that was a story and then pretty much that would be kind of horrifying it was horrifying because they never <laughs> what was horrifying was they never explained what it was it was just this weird white 
um, substance that came out of the ground. And then this farmer, local farmer, it started, the story was in England, ends up, um, I forgot what it was. It was like they, they, they came out the ground and I think it started with the rats, earwigs. I mean, there was one point in the story where earwigs were like in the trees and they're like, they're like the size of like small puppies. I mean, it was like they're falling down on you. I mean, dude, oh, hey, Matt, if you haven't read Food of the Gods from H.G. Wells, it's crazy, man. I've always felt like, why don't they make that movie? Like, give it the budget. Where Chickens are giant, terrifying. I can't giant imagine. Chicken. Yeah, it was a giant chicken <laughs> that was like chasing oh, people. Like, giant rats. Giant, the rats got to it. So it was always like, it was like the, um, the, the, the food table. So eventually mm -hmm. the story ends with human beings, you know, <laughs> one creature consumes the other creature. So then human beings end up drinking the milk, giving the milk to kids, and then the kids start drinking. And then they, and then the sequel dealt with a kid who had it, and the kids started getting big. And so they started showing stories where the kid's getting violent. Like he's in his room, but he's uh -oh. like a giant, you know, giant hand. He's like, I want to get out of here. I want to get out of here. And then it ends with him busting out of the house and then heading into the surrounding neighborhood. And the fact is, and it leaves it open because you go, well, this kid's that big. He's most likely going to have to eat humans. Oh, that was my man. first thought. I was like, yeah, yeah, that's what I was. I was like, he's gonna, he's gonna end up probably because he's so hungry. He's so hungry, and um, you know, unless he can find cattle around or whatever, he's gonna eat anything that he comes across. You know, and, I actually uh, yeah. was listening to a really interesting deep dive on YouTube. Uh, yeah. Not to get too far off subject, but yeah. it was saying like humans would taste like crap now because of all the different like chemicals, oh, like from the uh, food, and the likely. processed food. <laughs> like most we would likely. just taste like crap right now, Matt. Yeah. Uh, Real quick though, for you, I know uh, you were writing different stories previously, and you you kind of like wanted to do kaiju for Frankie. You know, what was some of the influences you drew upon when uh, writing writing out the script and everything? Uh, well, um, I did not grow up with giant monsters, as I have I have said. Um, I, I grew up with like ancient history and mythology, which incidentally, like you know, there there's some stuff happening there, but that's getting off topic. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my inspirations were a little more academic um than what frankie is and like i like i noticed uh like there were two th there are two things going on uh in this you know current era that we are living in mm -hmm. uh the first as evidenced by frankie is that the people who grew up with these movies you know the godzillas the you know the the, the 1950s horror films the the schlock Mm -hmm. um they're 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 all adults now and they're yep. in positions where you know they can be like you know oh i remember this from my childhood i want to make a big budget movie off of this yeah yeah uh pacific rim yeah, yeah. um the current crop of godzilla films like yep. you know th there is very clearly like uh, people in you know positions of power who are like you know yes we want to see this uh the second thing i noticed is that you know the Kaijus as a concept, you know, what, what, you know, we all know who Godzilla is, but what is Godzilla? What mm. is a Kaiju? You know, what are, you know, what's, you know, what's the subtext of seeing, you know, giant ants, you know, eating, you know, eating everything and, you know, spreading, you know, fear and terror amongst the populace. And, you know, we, we all know about the original Godzilla and we all know that it's a metaphor for, you know, nuclear weapons. And, you know, he come he comes out of the ocean, lays waste to all that, you know, come uh, all, all, of, all around him and then retreats back. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, you know, what was Japan going through during World War Two, seeing yep. like, you know, fleets yep. of bombers just, you know, obliterating yep. everything. Yes. Um, which incidentally, um, I, I'm not. I'm not trying to brag here, but like my grandfather on my mom's side uh, was a member of the CIA, and he was oh, wow. like after after the war, he was stationed in uh, Korea. And actually, there is a North Korean kaiju film uh, um, about. I don't remember what it's called. Pug, it starts with a P. Pugalar, Pugalaris. Some, something like something that. Like that. Yeah, yeah. It okay. exists. It yep, exists. Yep. And so, like, you know, you know. The, that you know for, for for japan you know that was a horrifying thing but then you know you bring godzilla to american audiences people are cheering the monster and it's yeah. like oh, so you know you you take that concept you take you know the core essence of what a kaiju is and you run with it like you know you you can shape it you can twist it you can tweak it you yeah. can move it um like you know Godzilla started as nuclear weapons, but like, you know, we have our existential threats today and they're different. Like, you know, we, mm -hmm. we're no longer worried about the world ending in nuclear war. 
as much. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, we're, we're <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> but you know, we're, you know, you've you've got you know global warming, you've got yep. climate change, you've got you know hurricanes, and you know there's that. You know the you know the our you know that that's those are our kaiju stories, yep. mm-hmm. and I. Uh, if, if, you, if you pay attention to the uh, promotional material that, you know, we, we've been sharing for Kaijus and Cowboys, we, you know, we, we, we plug it as like this conflict between East and West. Mm-hmm. And there's a, there's a reason why, uh, the, why our main character is a cowboy, because what is a Western? A Western is, you know, go out, you know, you go out to, yes. you know, new and explored lands, yeah. you, you know, you bend the land to your will. You make it your own. You you know you go forth and conquer. Like you know, man is the highest form of life there is, and mankind deserves you know deserves to be uh, dominant. And then you look at you know a Japanese kaiju film where man is very low on the food chain, where yeah. you know the the monster is overwhelming, and you better behave or else Godzilla is going to come and squash you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, yeah. you have that, you know, the, yeah. those those two different themes, and like they they they, you know, they, they mesh together so well. Like you know, yeah. who who's right? Who gets to exactly. you know, who deserves mm-hmm. to exist? Who's right? And who's wrong? That's right. So you know, that's you know that you know that's 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 the big stuff that you know you know these these are the big questions that exist. Now, granted, like, we have also made sure that there is plenty of great action and lots of, of great, you know, of punching. But you know, and you, you don't have to talk about the subtext if you don't want to. Yeah. But it's there, you know. So, yeah. I mean, having uh, kaiju's and, and robots just seems an out of this world type of concept. How do we see these two collide? Like, how how, how do they interact? How do they fight? What do these battles look like? Well. Uh, from a from a from a script writing view, uh, my my favorite thing that I love that you know my favorite trope is you know you have the very tiny thing yep. standing up against the very big thing, mm-hmm. and like you know you know that the tiny thing looks up and goes, "What are you gonna do?" Uh, and so there's you know that's you know that's where I come from when I'm it's like you know, a David and Goliath thing. almost right yeah 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 David and Goliath yeah, yeah. and so you know it, it's it's very there's there's a, there's also very much a sort of nature versus technology thing going mm. on as well like you know yeah. we have you know the, the the robot with his technology and it's ever and it's changing and it's evolving and you know there are for, there are forces beyond the cowboy that are you know moving and changing and you know the 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 the, the hunter has received his upgrades but at the same time there's the sense that he is replaceable mm-hmm. and there's mm-hmm. the sense that you know uh you know once you have served your use you know you, to the grave, you know, to the graveyard you go. I mean, look, you know, look at how you know we view like we view tech. It's like you know, here's here's the newest phone, and then you know, yeah, yeah. the next year, you know, throw that out. Here's the new one. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the same time, there's you know, I'm not going to give too much away. I know. Yeah, it's so but, tough. It's so hard. I know. Oh. I make it easy. <laughs> but there's, but you know, with the kaiju. You know, there, there's something going on there. It, you know, yeah. that you know, no one, no one can find. You, no one can quite place it. No one can can find it. No one wants to find it because you know, you know, it's very clear that these kaiju are our enemies, and we mm-hmm. must mm-hmm. remove yeah. them. Yeah. But there's something there. Yeah. And so now, you know, yeah. we we you, you'll find out. You'll find out. Well, well, from the visual uh, side of it, um, I'm somebody who grew up during the Bronze Age of comics. So I was heavily influenced by like Jack Kirby, uh, Herb Trimpey, um, and I like to put a shout out because I, I, I actually got to meet Herb Trimpey off and on. Herb Trimpey worked, I worked with Doug Moonish. I hope I said his, his name right. He was the writer. And they both worked on the Shogun Warriors uh, comic book series, as well as the Godzilla comic book series for Marvel. These two series were so influential to me as a young person growing up that it, it literally was the starting point. It led me, it, it, it inspired me to go down the, the, the path that I did as a career, as an artist. That's so cool. So, and then John Byrne. So for me, when I'm drawing visually, so when Matthew sends me the script, 
he'll lay something out. Um, due to my experience working for film, doing storyboards and that kind of thing, and then also some comic book stuff, I'm looking for the way uh, visually. I know. Well, yeah, I, I, I'm getting ahead of myself. I remember once working with a director, and he was in animation, and he said he had me. I remember him. He was sort of leaned against a table, and he said, "Frank," he said, "As an artist, when you're doing storyboards, he said you have to ask yourself the question: Is this something that you would sit down and watch for two hours when you're doing those storyboards?" And I was like, huh? And I was young, you know, in my 20s and stuff. And I said, wow. And it's always stuck with me. Is this something that I would enjoy watching? If say, if I was the reader or back or, or I'm sitting in a movie. And that's how I think when I'm drawing the scenes out is that I'm always making sure that there is so much, uh, that there's enough uh, attention to action, but also those quiet moments too. Those moments that like, if people look at a lot of the Bronze Age comics, I mean, you would see scenes, one of the most powerful scenes for me was an X-Men, in X-Men comics with Chris Claremont, where um, Wolverine and, and, and Nightcrawler would be in the kitchen drinking beers. <laughs> they weren't fighting anybody. It wasn't yeah. a splash page. They're just sitting there having a beer. It humanized. It, it was something about that just was like, wow, man, they're just, they're just chilling. Or like, I remember getting in Avengers where um, Thor is chilling, reading the paper, and Jarvis comes out and, and gets him some tea. And, and I love those moments as well. So it's not just about the Flash, the flashy stuff with the big the big splash page and stuff like that it's about um weaving taking with the um the from the script and what the writers mm -hmm. put the script and then laying it out it's like just like a film a cinematographer and a director where they have to lay it out so that everything kind of you know the messages flow through so that so that the mind so that people who are reading it they can sort of take it in but then also those those other messages can be subtly planted in there too and they go oh wow there's a hey, he just he just did that with that that kaji there but there is a message. <laughs> no, I love There's something it. There, I love you know? it. And so that's that's my job. That's my job. I'm, that's what I'm always thinking of. Mm -hmm. No, that is awesome. Yeah. I, I think right now is a perfect time. Let's go ahead and take a look at the zoo campaign. All right. And get Let's a good it. idea yes. of what we're what we're yes. campaigning for. <laughs> so we are yep. looking at Kaijus and yeah. Cowboys issue number one. Their campaign yeah. is live on Zoop right now. This is by Matthew yes. Blair and Frankie B. Washington. East meets West in a battle between massive Kaiju monsters and yes. the robot cowboy that hunts them. If you ever wondered what Samurai Jack, Clint Eastwood, or Spear from Primal would do if they were in a Kaiju movie, this is your book. We're looking at $1,426 of $2,000 with 55 supporters and seven days to go. Congratulations so far on your success. You. How are you, you guys feeling uh, about this campaign so far? Oh, I wish my nerves weren't so rattled. <laughs> I <laughs> we started I, off really well. We, we started really well. And then um, it's, it's, it's been sort of trickling a little bit. And the thing mm -hmm. about it is that, um, yeah, it, it would be nice. It, it, you know, I, I just feel like we're so close. I think that if, it, and, and look, I'm a realist too. So I'm gonna be honest to the people out there that are watching this. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. It's not like we're gonna stop not trying to bring this out. But the thing about it is that we're so close. It's yeah. almost like the finish line. Like when you say if you're in a massive marathon and you've been you've got past all the hard stuff and you literally can look in the distance and there's a finish line, and then literally there's a force field. <laughs> like, you know, as soon as you, you you run smack into it, it just stops you and you're just mm -hmm. staring. You're literally staring at that uh finish line, you're going. But I can make it. I can, and it's just like, nope. That's I, I feel that I feel this kind of heaviness right there, and I'm like, what? I, I don't know. It's like I, you know, we really want to get these our book into the hands of readers. The first, the first um, uh, crowdfunding that we did last year was was very successful, and it actually was for the teaser, the teaser comic, which was a zero issue, which was which is on her thing because you don't see a lot of people doing zero issues these days um you see people just mo they mainly go one two three four and whatever so you well, guys are gonna have 13 all together yeah so we yeah, have so and, we, i mean yeah. there, there are like a whole bunch of opportunities for like like th there's the main series and like you know i've got my uh google doc on my uh phone and uh on my uh computer and like i have th there are a bunch of ideas for like one shots Okay. That, that I've got going, like, um, like the, the spear from Primal bit, like you know, yep. if you're not watching Primal, watch it. It's amazing. Yeah. Oh, it, it, it's it's it. Uh, and so like, yep. you know, there's there's a whole bunch of stuff there. Like there's there's so much potential. Yeah. We, and we, we yeah. And it's like we're so yeah, close. We're so close. If we can make it, our thing is is that 
we we're learning from this because again every experience um on these crowdfundings and stuff like that it's a learning experience for both of mm -hmm. us we learn well, doesn't zoop have the ability where they can uh, like extend it by a few days too no i don't think okay so, I, I, I could have sworn. I, I'll have to. Do, maybe I've just done so many interviews. I, I got it mixed up. Which platform does that? I thought. I always Indie, thought Indie it was Indiegogo. Indiegogo. Indiegogo oh. has in demand. They have in demand, which is great. Indie, in, uh, the in demand is fantastic for people who want to have something go past a certain time. Because mm -hmm. then you can just have people. You know, how many months later they can just co continuously keep. You know paying into it or whatever and then people you know i guess for the person who's doing the campaign they would just have to order you know a, a vast number of books or whatever and then be like able to ship them out but i think the big thing about zoop um is that the fulfillment that was the whole big thing about them is that they um supposedly have a, fu a fulfillment service in which they take care of it which oh. can be you know it, yeah that's the whole thing about zoop. yeah that's nice it, yeah. which is we'll see we'll see how it goes you know if we if we can pass this then we'll see we would love to no 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 not if not if when yeah, okay when. okay when when we i, I like correct. that mentality man let's see more when. of that let's go when, baby yeah. yep I, I had i had a crummy little commission zone i'm such a realist job before i uh before i did the uh before i uh moved on and yep. and like you know they they, all, they always said like you know you you can't be defeatist right. uh mm -hmm. you know you, you gotta you gotta you know, keep that's, going. That, that's, that's that that's that realist in me the realist in me is trying to brace yeah. myself brace myself for the thing it's like oh you know so but hey, you're, you're correct let's Still uh let's keep days. it real with uh some All of right. these rewards that we're going to look at so we can get the digital right. copy of kaiju and cowboys for five bucks mm -hmm. yes, the, the physical print copy for seven yes Pl uh, plus uh, plus shipping um oh yeah 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 I, yeah but mm. And then uh, a blank cover copy too. So uh, I want to see some fans. fans yeah, are. no, this is awesome. Yeah, Do yes. you offer any sort of uh, commission, like where you'll draw on the cover? That's, well, that's what that's that's that real big one over on the other side. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah the blank yeah. cover with custom art from uh, Frankie B. Yeah. So this looks insane. Oh my God, this is gorgeous. Well, this I put an gorgeous. example up. Yeah, I put see? an example that's up. Uh, yeah, because that's actually a cover. That's an actual cover that I did for uh, Ultraman. It was for, it was on an Ultraman uh, variant cover. And I wow. actually, that was one side. The other side had Ultraman and, and doing uh, fighting this character, Jairus. So yeah, so I just wanted to show an example of, of the level of work. No, that See is what so I mean awesome. about having an artist who's really passionate about a certain <laughs> yeah. subject yeah. and writing yeah. for that artist? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then we have the retailer bundle. So this is yes, 10 definitely. comics, five patches, and five sticker bundle. Uh, for right. $50, that is an outstanding price. It That's is. That's right, yeah. And then Pretty we have a tip it, jar. Yeah, tip jar. tip jar. Yeah. And then thank some you, of the... Thank you for the $91 for, yep. from that. Thank you for yeah. that. No, that is so cool to see uh, the importance of having a tip jar. Like, because yeah. if you would have never had this, that would have been 91 bucks you would have never had. Exactly, uh -huh. yeah. Because, I mean, I, I'm sure there's people out there who, you know, whatever the case, they, they may not even read comics, but they go, wow, we really like what you guys are doing. We're very, you know, we're behind that. So how can we support you? And mm -hmm. that's a great way to support somebody. Yeah. I so mean, the digital, the digital comic we have is retailer price. Like, you know, that, that is what, you know, you, th that's the price you would pay for a digital comic from Marvel or DC. Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, I, I would say course, the physical print too. I mean, I've seen yeah. a lot of comics from DC and Marvel hit the $7 mark. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we'll, we, we want people to read this. Yes. Uh, we, we would very much like to be able to, uh, I would very much like to be able to pay my rent on this, but... <laughs> If given the choice between having lots of readers yeah. or a few spending a crap ton of money, I would rather yeah. have lots of readers. Well, let's be honest. How do comic books survive? Let's be honest. Like it's, it's not comic books don't survive by just the creators. Like creators, I, we can sit here all day. We could be like, "Well, it's the greatest thing since sliced cheese," and talk mm -hmm. talk up an amazing storm. But it's, it comes down to the fandom. It comes down to the readers. You get the books you read them word of mouth begin talking about it and you say wow you guys need to read this because this is incredible because i've done it when i was young and and reading x-men or new mutants or, or, or new mutants which was an indie comic or you know uh, distant soil all those those kind of books i then told somebody else it's different now because now you have the internet and the internet allows us much more faster way to be able to trans you know what's the word transmit that information so you can be like wow i just read this and you got to check it out and stuff like that but we we can't exist it's such a symbiotic relationship we can't exist without the fans the fans mm -hmm. 
-hmm. we can't exist without readers because we could we could i could just be drawing 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 and just goes out into the ether no absolutely <laughs> but, but the thing about it the readers are the ones who will tell us really be like well you know hey, we, we dig it and uh or we don't dig it so there you go there you have it no absolutely yeah, I, the, the, the yeah, the, the beautiful thing about things like Twitter is that it is. I, I, so I'm gonna name drop here. Uh, yeah, I, I, I live in uh, Portland, and right. the great thing about living in Portland is that it is a comic book city. Mm. Uh, and so you know, I, I've been able to talk to you know people like Brian Michael Bendis, who is nice. shares a, shares a lot of you know what we've been saying, like you know, and yeah. like you know he he was saying like the great thing about things like Twitter is that you have instant yes uh engagement uh, engagement and you mm -hmm. have, like the I second you know a book comes out you know whether yes. or not people like it yes so. i love that i anybody who responds to me i i respond back and anything i YouTube try to channel, too anything i try it's, it's hard like, I, I, for, well for me for me i look at it i go well if a person took the time to come in and say, hey, how you doing? I think of it just like, yeah, if you, if I'm out in the street and I, I was, say, if I was drawing in a coffee shop and somebody came up and was looking over and they came over and said, hey, that looks pretty cool. I'm not going to just merely turn the corner, be, turn my pad and be like, hmm. <laughs> you know, I'm going to be like, hey, all right, thanks. What's going on, man? And, and start chatting them up, man. Mm -hmm. You know? So anytime somebody comes, then let's talk. You know, let's no, talk. Absolutely. You, you know, if you're into kajus or you're into um, whatever, then let's chat about it, you know? Absolutely. And there's the link for everyone in chat to, uh, you know, like we've been hearing, word of mouth is 100% free and it is yeah. one of the most effective ways to help oh. get the word out there. So share that oh. link on Facebook and Twitter, help yes. get the word out there for the Kaiju and the Cowboys. Uh, and let's take a look at some of these add-ons too. So it looks like we have sticker pack for three bucks, a patch uh, yep. for five. An amazing trading patch, card. by the way. Yes. Yeah. So uh, is this uh, our protagonist? Yes. Yes. Yes, oh, hey. it is. Uh, have I have, okay, here, uh, hold, hold on. Let me uh, let me get this. Uh... So, there you so go. Uh, mm -hmm. some of the trading cards. Yeah, mm -hmm. some of them. Yeah, we want. So cool. ide ideally, we wanted to be released some other ones if we had passed the two thousand mark. But you know, we'll get there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we will. We will. No, those look awesome. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Go. So, what's the Deus Ex uh, Machina? Is that a big part of the story? It's just something I thought would be kind of cool back there. Yeah. No, I like it. Though. Well, I like you know. I you know I'm observant, I like so I like to ask questions. Yeah, I like it. I just I well mean, you know, like well, like you know a, a Deus Ex Machina, a God in the Machine. Mm -hmm. uh, I like. Frankie, yeah, <laughs> mm, you put me in a bind here. There's you know no, Andy, there's. Mom's the word. Well, well, I will say. I Figure it out, that. Matt. Hey, hey, Cody. Hey, Co hey, Cody. Hey, Cody. Hey, Cody. I love the fact that you're the first person who hasn't brought up. The title, because we call it Kajus and Cowboys, and we've and we've had two people. I've had two who who, who said who've had to tell us that that the term should be Kaju and Cowboys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, we, sorry. But, and, and, My and, bad. And, and I, but but the funny part about it is I explained and I, I tried to explain to another person. I said, Hey, look. I said, Well, I grew up in the '80s, well, in the '70s and '80s. But I said one of the thing about it was that we wanted to make this our own. So. Mm -hmm. Back then, you could say comics. You could spell it C-O-M-I-X. It still was comics. You know, it still it just was a different way of saying it. So, so, so putting the S on kajus doesn't really hold a major reflection. You know, a bad reflection on the fact that kaju. It's just that we. It becomes our thing. Yeah, I think uh, I, I would have really never guessed. Really yeah, that's I what I mean. never so guessed. I love that. I just wanted to call because yeah. it's so funny that we had that, and, I, and I've engaged people. And I said, Hey, look, I'm from that era where we we had fun with everything we had mm -hmm. fun with the words we had fun with art and stuff like that you know yeah i uh, i think own. only like pr i would almost say like that would be your huge enthusiast uh, of the genre right. that would probably notice that i mean i i like kaiju but i never would have known that you, you're not supposed to put an hey, s if at it, the... hey, if, if it gets engagement if it gets engagement yeah, it works i love it i'm like it There's works no such thing as bad publicity <laughs> that's what i mean it's like it worked i was like thanks well hey all right cool let's talk about it <laughs> so uh, I mean, we have uh the trading card yeah. the steed for five bucks do you have yep. an image of that as well where were you showing that no. okay nope, i don't have one with that that yeah yep and then what were you saying matt uh 
It, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, I mean, I was, I was going to go on a whole thing about like, you know, like, you know, kaiju, you know, the kaiju movies, like it's, you know, they, they all have names and, you know, they, they all have their own personalities and it's about like, you know, the, the, the individual, but, you know, mm-hmm. with us, the, the kaijus are, you know, it, it's a little more, uh, swarm like, like, yeah. like the, the yeah, it, it's more. It's more of a. It, it's less. You know, here is one. You know, monster that's you know trying to take out all these robots, and it's more an entire ecosystem. I, I, uh, I, I and like, I yeah, yeah. That you know, that, that that's something that uh, sort of came about, and like Frank, Frankie sort of added that because like that, mm-hmm. like you know, when when you read, especially issue one, like you know, like it's not just the monsters that are you know tearing down. Uh, uh, Tearing, tearing these robots to pieces you know you've got like you know little like you know flies buzzing around everywhere and like you know we you know we've again you know you're gonna have to read the book but like yeah. you know we've got we've got like a whole bunch of imagine like really yeah. fun and fascinating stuff you know all, all this stuff you know it, it's there and it's happening and like yeah. you know you, you guys are gonna love it like yeah. oh, that's so awesome that is so awesome yeah, I, I love yeah. I, I love how you uh brought up adding the s uh matt's gonna wake up 50 years from now in a cold sweat thinking about adding that <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> hey hey i you know like i said i never would have i would have never known had you have never brought it up yeah yeah i, lo- I so, love anything that would get engagement Does anybody mm-hmm. if you if you want to talk about it let's talk about it <laughs> so uh here is the bundle deal for uh stickers patch and card for 10 bucks mm-hmm. Uh, yep. We have a nice Zoop exclusive print for 10 as well. Oh, yes. That, yeah, that is awesome. Hand-drawn card from Frankie B for 60. So what type of yeah. uh, what, what type of card are we going to see? This is our official. Hold on one second. Let me get you okay. this, in. This is, this, is, this is our official Kajus and Cowboys card. It's a 32-point black, black uh, point card. It's very thick. There's a thickness to it. Very sturdy. And pretty much, I'll draw. I'll draw anybody. Like we, 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 we did really well on our first campaign, where people had me. I think one guy. Well, I don't know a guy, but one person had me draw a uh, Godzilla dressed as uh, Clint Eastwood. Oh, that's so cool. So that's what I mean. I mean, it's not limited. It's not limited yeah. to the characters. Although I would love because it's, it's RIP. I would love to be able to draw our characters on it. But if you, if you know, if you say, hey, Frank, can you, because I've worked on the Ultraman card set as well. If you say, hey, can you put Ultraman on there? I'll draw Ultraman for you. Or whatever. If you, I've had somebody uh, uh, ask me to draw them. Just draw them. And um, and so they sent me a picture, a JPEG of them, and I drew them. So whatever you want on it. So there you go. And, a fi- no, that's and, cool. and, 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 and one thing I want to add, I am so happy to see sketch cards making a huge, huge, mm-hmm. uh, I won't say a comeback, but they're making a huge appearance with a lot of indie comic books that are doing crowdfunding. I'm starting to see a lot of, because of sketch cards, a lot of these indie creators are, are finding a new way to be able to get original artwork. Cause I'm a collector. I yeah. love original artwork and I love uh, figures and stuff like that, but I love original artwork. And this is a great way for you to get original artwork. That's not that big. I mean, it's two and a half by three and a half size. You get a binder and I'm telling you it is addictive. Because once you start with one card, then if you get if you start looking around and see other creators and stuff like that, you're gonna want to get another card. Mm-hmm. And boy, it starts packing up and packing up. Pack. <laughs> it's amazing. So anyway, that option is there. So there you go. Oh, that is so cool. There is like like yeah like, like one of the things I love about the the sketch cards and like yeah Frankie's right that like that there is you know it, it's, it's starting to make a bit of a comeback and uh, you know I, I i thought about this i'm i'm not a collector but like at the same time like i realized that like images and you know the the ability to produce stuff yeah it's never the good news is it's never been easier to make your own comic book and get it out there yeah. the bad news is it's never been easier to make your own comic and get it yeah. out there yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so like, you know, how how do you make, you know, how, how do you make something special in a yeah. time mm-hmm. when it's so easy to it, when when it when it's so cheap and easy to produce? Yeah. Custom. Yeah. You know, custom uh artwork, you know, custom images, you know, stuff that really makes it your own. 
and I'm realizing that there's a garbage truck that's yeah, I know. I was like, house. That's what that is. <laughs> I thought so... you were being attacked. I thought you were being attacked by somebody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the kaiju's yeah, are that's, that's, uh, that's the robots. The kaiju's just, are fighting in the back. And yeah, then he just yeah. vanishes. <laughs> <laughs> he's, like, give me a, he's like, give me a second, guys. He gets into a giant robot and battles it. <laughs> well, well, cons- considering <laughs> how. Amazing. Honestly, considering that I'm filming this on a crummy little Chromebook, the, the fact that I haven't dipped out. Oh, is, this is amazing. Kind of, kind of yeah. kind of impressive Cody, but this yeah. is amazing this is it looks he looks great you look great yeah but like, <laughs> that's what happens oh, when you keep you. it geekly baby yeah <laughs> Also, you know, only, you know, only three people. So, you know, there's yeah. that. But yeah, like, you know, it, it's, you know, we we are we are in an age, we are in a time when the the the, the way like you know, the, the way to show off and the way to, you know, you know, let you, you know, plant your flag is, you know, to say, you know, here's this thing, it is one of a kind and I own it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I'm a collector. And, yeah. Oh, I'm like Yeah. Jeez, man! Why, the own original artwork, I would give anything. If Jack, if Jack Kirby, like a Jack Kirby piece, or something of some of those other artists, like to be like, yeah, I'd be like, yeah, I'll jump on that piece. <laughs> you know, yeah, unfortunately, so would like fifty thousand, yeah. uh, like a thousand other people, which is why it's yeah, 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 but you know, but you know what's so funny about that though? The whole thing about original artwork and stuff like that is that we don't know where where a property or an IP is going to be. That's the fun. I think that's the really interesting part because again, you take something like Ninja Turtles. What about those people? I remember meeting Kevin Eastman when I was going to art school, and I remember giving him a Leonardo uh, a drawing that I did. He was cool. He was just like, "Oh man, it's really cool and whatever." But I sit there and I go, "Man, could you imagine back then if he had did a drawing for me? I would have had a Kevin Eastman original, and whatever the value would have been because but based off of the Ninja Turtles. Mm-hmm. But he at that point, those guys didn't know where they were gonna be." They didn't know what they had, but through time, time told the, the tale. And so we don't know where Kaji's and Cowboys going to be. We just, we don't know, you know, what would happen? What would happen if out of the blue, some producer or something came up and said, Hey, you know, Hey, we, uh, hey, we saw you guys online or whatever. And whatever. <laughs> then it's like, you, you know, I'm just saying, hypothetically, I wouldn't want to be the worst person that missed out on getting some original yeah. piece or something and be like, oh man, you know, how did I miss out on that? Well, mm-hmm. you know, I've done that. I've done it. I've missed out on some pieces of work where I go, man, I procrastinated myself out of that one. And it's painful. It's like, oh, how did I miss out on that? <laughs> I yeah. will say this, so, Frankie is one hell of a salesman. Holy crap, uh, you got me wanting to buy it, one right now. <laughs> hey, well, the good thing about it is that you that if somebody wants to get it, and, and I'm being straight up, looking into the camera, if you can see, whatever. Um, I'm somebody who's passionate about my artwork. I, so when I draw something for somebody, it's not going to be just some little squiggly line or whatever. I'm going to draw a piece that, that I'm going to feel proud about. So any kind of artwork I do, I, I got to feel good about it. You know, I can't mm-hmm. just walk in there and because because honestly, I'll be I'll be real with you. If I look at something and and, and I don't feel good about it, I'll, you know, I'll tell you, I'll be like, no, I feel 50 percent on that. <laughs> you know, that's 50. I feel 50 and below <laughs> on that one. And usually I'm not. Usually I'm like, that's a 200. That's 200 percent piece right there. And I'll yeah, tell I've, you about it, too. <laughs> I've, 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 <laughs> like when we did the Kickstarter, I yeah. uh, Frankie sent me uh, the cards that he did. And I got, you know, I got to hold them. I got to see them. And like, it is, yeah, oof, like, it, it, like yeah. you know, I, I was halfway tempted to, you know, lose a couple. Yeah, uh, yeah. But I didn't. I didn't. They were all delivered. <laughs> they uh, stayed yeah, strong. Matt, Matt, I've, sent, I've sent Matt some original artwork. He's got some original. He's a collector. I'm trying to get him into the collector game, man. I sent him some pieces. I mean, yeah. You, you know, I've, I've, I just like... I mean, when I was a kid, I moved around a lot. So, like, yeah. you know, having lots of stuff was like, yep. oh, it's going to be a, yeah. a pain in the butt. But, like, you know, I, getting there. It, it, you it's know, getting we're, we're getting there. And, yeah. like, I would also like to point out, like, you know, you know, th- these are limited. Like, you know, yeah. not to you know, not to place a sense of urgency on these, but, you know, there are only 13 cards left yeah. on this on this campaign. Yeah. Yes. Um, and... You know, yeah, sure. You know, when 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 you're selling something, you want to instill a sense of urgency. But at the same time, it's like, you know, one of the things that you know Frankie's really good at understanding is that you got to keep it special, mm-hmm. um, because you know my historian brain remembers the crash of the '90s. 
Yeah. Uh, and like, you know, you know, what caused that? Well, it was publishers realizing that, you know, oh, you know, these old golden age comics are, you know, super valuable and people are, you know, making like hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah. from yeah. them. You know, let's take advantage of that. You know, yeah. oh, if you buy, you know, this holographic cover yeah. of, you know, this, this ghost, uh, ghost writer number one, yeah. uh, you know, it'll be worth a million dollars in like, you know, 20 years. But you know they they print like a million of them. It's yeah. like mm -hmm. the speculative the speculative market. Yeah, that's what it was. That's what killed it. Yeah, too much. And it's too much. Yeah, it's 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 um, yeah, like it, it's 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 a, it's a delicate balancing act, and it's something that I like to think that uh you know Frankie and I well Frank Frankie definitely understands. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you know, and incidentally, like you know, once once this is over, this is gone. This is, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, this is not coming back. So, you know, we got a week left. Yep. No, absolutely. Yeah, and speaking yeah. of original art, here are two original yeah. pages from the comic itself for 300 a piece. And yeah, I don't, yeah. Well, actually, oh, go ahead. can I just explain? When we sent that to Zoo, um, technically the 300 was supposed to be for, you know, the pages from issue one. And then people can kind of, you know, we would have it. Yeah, because they only put, yeah. Yeah, because it was supposed to be all the pages. That's that's interesting. So they only put two. Oh, we gotta talk okay, so you, you have the option to uh, buy yeah. uh, all the other pages as well? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so I got that, you. I got gotcha. you. I think I think that's a little mix up right there. So we got to contact them about that. But and yeah, then we that have was, uh, original cover, cover for that, four, yeah. 450. Mm -hmm. So you yeah. draw the whole comic traditionally and then move it to digital or? Actually, here, let me see. I'm going to see if I can. Uh, just first, Let me just step out so I can grab it. See if I can grab yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, hold on a second. I'm going to. Okay. He does. I've seen it. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. It, like the the level of detail is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Like I, I like you know, now that he's not here. I, I like I said, I cannot sing Frankie's praises enough. <laughs> like you know, <laughs> so yeah. You know, we've we've got uh, original pages, original custom artwork. Uh, bundle deals. Uh, the, the 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 patch. It's it's what you see on uh, uh, Frankie's screen right there as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's like about uh, I, I don't know. The, the screen doesn't do a very good sense of scale. But like uh, I actually uh, got it. As, um, I actually gifted it to uh, some friends of mine, and they actually made a hat. Like it it takes up like that much of your hat. Dude, that's a big looks, patch. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it looks, it, it's like, I think it's like uh, three inches wide mm -hmm. or something like that. And uh, like, it, it it would look great on a vest or, you know, a hat or anything. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we covered almost everything. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. Like, after, uh, after Frankie comes back, we're going to take a look at that. And then I'll, I'll also edit out like this little transition too. Uh, and then we'll kind of yeah, just go through some of the previews right, and I'm then back. we'll wrap yes. it up. All right, so I gotta do let's go ahead tricky. and All zoom right, in on do, Frankie. I gotta, I gotta do something tricky here because usually when I draw, I tend to draw. So as I can show this to you, this is the pages for issue one. Mm -hmm. So one and two. So I usually draw two pages to one eight, uh, 11 by 17 comic book board. So think of it like almost manga size. So it's almost to the actual comic book size. Mm -hmm. So if somebody wanted it, I would have to just cut it and stuff. But then that'd be page one and two. So that's a rich, that's on the actual. Can you see it? Is yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, we have you okay. zoomed in too, so it's nice and big. Okay, good. So then that. Now the reason why I'm holding it like this is because I can't reveal the other cover. There's a <laughs> there's a cover because I hate I hate wasting paper. So mm -hmm. there's a cover underneath this part. Right? Okay, where well, I'm hitting the finger. <laughs> so I, I'm not showing. Sure. So here, let me make sure I'm doing this right. Ah, where are you at? Okay, there you go. There's the original. Can you see it? Yep, yep, yep. yep. No, that's, that's gorgeous. So do you add all the colors digitally then? Yes, I do. Okay. But but here's a trick. Here's a thing, because I just did a cover for another comic book where um, I hand did the colors. Um, and it, it came out pretty good. It looked really good. Um, it was like all marker and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I, I was thinking I might try, might try it on one of the, um, maybe if we do um, issue six. So yeah, uh, maybe, maybe, right yeah, here maybe. is a... A trailer? How long is uh, this trailer? 
Uh, it's it's not really anything special. It it's just me talking. It, it's just it's Frankie and I talking special. about the book. Yeah, it's yeah. I was say we can we, we can watch this if you guys want to. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure, yeah. <laughs> Look, Frankie's like, let's do it. Matt's like, oh, yeah, please. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Just, just give like you guys the heads up. Talking. Um, <laughs> I, hey, I, I went through it too. That's it's a it's a big part of the growth, though. You got to do it. Uh, is, um, that really, is that really me? <laughs> so we uh, I really th- sound like that. Yeah. This will uh, bleed over your audio channel. So if you guys try to talk, uh, it'll bleed over. And then I don't okay. think you guys will be able to hear it on your end, but we'll be able to hear it loud and clear on ours. Okay, well, like cool. if I mute, well, if we mute, would that help? Well, no, 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 no. I'm just saying, if you try to talk, we won't be able to hear you. Uh, that that's just, just it. Like what you, you you'll be able to go through. This will just overpower you. Okay. All right. Hey everyone, my name's Matt. I am the writer of Kaijus and Cowboys. Hey everybody, this is Frankie B, and I'm the co-creator and the artist. Some on more Kaijus of that Deus Ex Machina. So last year, Frankie and I ran <laughs> now you have a to write it in. <laughs> campaign for a prequel of mm. Kaijus and Cowboys comic, You'll see. starring You'll see. a character yep. we decided to call the bot with Plant no name. Seed. The campaign was a huge success, and it made us want to tell bigger stories with more awesome robots. The success of the crowdfunding campaign also helped us land a publishing deal with a company called Second Sight Publishing. Uh, But before that comic book hit stores, (laughs) we want to give you guys, the fans, an opportunity to. Yeah, I think this is good. This is good. Yeah, we're both really proud. The Kickstarter has like an act. The Kickstarter had like an actual like trailer that we had where we had like an actual voice actor doing something. So like, I mean, you want like. And help make the something art like flow that's like entertaining that and not just strong. like an info dump. Like, hey Matt, okay. hey Matt you may have to get a Cowboys and Cowboy <laughs> cap, a uh, baseball cap. I I did, I, oh, I did. did. The problem. Oh. Uh, well, yeah, like uh, well, I had uh, I, I, when you were gone, I was talking about the patches, not very well, yep. admittedly, but like you know, um, my my dad actually, um, when we were doing the Kickstarter, he bought uh, the the whole package deal and gifted me a hat with the patch on it oh, the nice. reason why the reason why i haven't worn it is because right. i have a very large head <laughs> kaiju size what a brain what a brain <laughs> yeah. yeah okay so like, I, yeah the, I, I like to joke uh i either have a big brain or a thick skull either way it's a big brain. uh why and, not like, both the, the hat the hat does not yeah, fit very well like yeah like i have a like it is yeah so like I, the the hat just looks weird I may have um, to try to do a do rag, see, because I got dreadlocks. I don't do good with like hats on the head, but the do rag, maybe on the do rag thing, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I said like you know the patch looks great on vests, like I yeah. like what when. Like when, when things clear up a little bit more and we can start going to like conventions, yeah. Uh, which you know, incidentally, I'm I'm gonna start doing that you know, eventually. Nice. Um, like what I want to do is I want to get like I have a jean jacket. You know, you rip off the sleeves, you get a vest, and I, like it is it is my goal to have a vest with patches for all of the books I have ever worked on. Oh, oh. well so, done. Very you know, cool. Very cool. That's, you know, a, that, great, that, that's that, a great. That's great. Got some of the punk uh, punk talking. rocker vibes to it too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That, so, but but you just brought up something, Cody. Isn't that what indie is? That punk rock, that kind uh, of yeah. like rebel. You know, we're 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 indie creators. We're that rebel where we're like, there's not, there's really no rules. I mean, there's rules for us in the sense of the, you know the the templates that mm-hmm. we follow to make sure you know how things work and stuff. But but beyond that, we're building our own castle. You know, our, our cathedral. You could build yeah. it. You could color it any way you want. You could build it as high as you want it. That, I love that, man. We are. We're this rebels, is, man. This is where this is where the fun stuff happens. This is mm-hmm. where the new ideas mm-hmm. start bubbling. You know, yeah. this is this is where you know this like this this is where like like part of the, like a big reason why I love comic books so much is that uh, it is the most open. Like it, it's like you know if you have an idea. All you got to do is, you know, you, you get a piece of paper, you can just draw it, or you can yep. find someone to collaborate with and just go. That's right. uh, and like yeah. that, that, that has always been there. Like, you know, like, you know, I, I, I don't remember the, the comic book scene in the 1950s, but like, I remember reading and like, yep. you know, seeing all of these books, yep. you know, a, like after Superman came out, there was just this massive glut yes. of people who were like, you know, oh, we want, you know, we want to make our Superman. Yeah, and exactly. like you know, 
you know, some of them worked. Like, you know, that's you, you got like characters like, you know, Batman, Green Lantern, and um, uh, Captain gonna, Marvel. Well, Shazam. Shazam. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, <laughs> I love that. Yeah. yeah. He was like, oh, hold on a second. He's like, hold on. <laughs> I, I, I always go back and forth. I'm like, because I love Shazam. Yes. But I still call him Captain Marvel, man. He's who was Captain... actually, who actually was more popular than Superman. Yes, he uh, was. He's, and yeah. for good reasons. So <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Uh, where, where's Captain uh, Marvel come into the in, into play? So That's okay. Weird. So what happened was uh, real, really, really quick. Um, uh, Captain oh. Marvel was selling better than Superman, but Superman came first. So yeah. and uh, Mar Captain Marvel was published by Fawcett Comics, yeah. and Superman was published by National Allied Publications. Uh, which became known as DC Comics. Uh, DC realized that since they were first, they held copyright and sued the ever-loving crap out of Fawcett Comics. Yep. Uh, it's it's a, like the court case is on Wikipedia. Like that's how big it was. And it dragged on for years. And then the 50s happened and then the comics code happened. And like basically every horrible thing that people assume rap music and violent video games do today they yeah. thought comics were yeah. doing mm -hmm. in right. the 50s that's right and so there was the big crunch and yep. all of those ideas that only lasted a couple of issues they were gone Fawcett comics wound up having to go bankrupt uh and i think they were bought by dc uh, it, what in the 70s maybe yep. but in the meantime the 60s happened and marvel comics became a thing and they realized hey wait a minute there's this really popular superhero named captain marvel and we don't want that confusion with the brand, but the copyright's gone, so we have to strike first. And mm -hmm. they created Marvel. Yeah. That's right. Uh, and then Marvel gave his powers to Carol Danvers, and that's how yeah. that happened. And that's yeah, how we yeah. live in a situ. That's how we live in a world where uh, Captain Marvel uh, is uh, in the MCU, but uh, Warner Brothers comes out with the Shazam movie. That's yeah, right. yeah, there yeah. You go. That's so, how that happens. Here are. Also or go ahead. Well, I was going to explain that also because you're looking at the artwork is that I actually, if, I don't know if you noticed, but I hand do the let, I do, uh, the sound effects. Mm -hmm. Because that's one of the things for me when I grew up looking at a lot of the, um, the uh, Bronze Age comic books was that many artists back then, well, also the letterers too, or, or excuse me, embellishers. <laughs> I, I used to love that term, embellishers. They would actually incorporate the sound effects with the art. So like right there, you have this 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 uh, this drill device right here, and it goes zzz. So instead of that being just laid, you know, digitally laid in there, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm actually trying to make it work with it, with the actual artwork. So I, I'm not a letterer. I don't consider myself a letterer when I do this. I consider myself the artist who's just adding on the sound effect. To yeah, this, yeah. Right, you know, right in there. So it's part of the art. It's just mm -hmm. another extension of the art. So I just wanted I to add that into people. You know, and I really like, you know, I really like the style, like how you did the the view of the earth and then you oh, kind of yeah. did like the, the breakaway. The it's just not show. earth. Or... <laughs> it's not earth. <laughs> so what is it? It's an alien planet. Earth-like. Uh, Earth-like. Earth so, like. Yes, it, yes. It, it's Earth-like. Earth yeah. And how much, how much should I, how much should I reveal here? So I mean, is it, is it, does the hollow earth theory work with this too? Like I know there's kind of with some kaiju well, stories, the hollow well, earth that, theory. Well, well, that effect right there, that's just an old school effect of mm -hmm. visualization. Because I think when Matthew um, first did the script, he, he's saying like somehow the view was like, you know, I think, did you say from the, from the, from the, um, the space all the way down the planet? So, so as an artist, I either draw multiple panels illustrating, you know, from space all the way to the ground, which might get convoluted, or I do. I start thinking outside the box, like a lot of the old school. If you look at a lot of old school, especially from the, for me, the seventies and eighties, a lot of artists would try to find ways. They would do stuff called cutaways, where mm -hmm. they would show an image of something, and then they'll be like, "Okay, this is a die cut," and then you push back, and then you push into the the image. These are just old techniques that 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 you know that I'm hoping that the new generation that's never possibly seen it go, oh, wow, wow, that's whatever. So then I can explain. I'd be like, well, yeah, the, um, what I'm doing isn't really like revolutionary. Now, is that the word? Evol evolutionary? Not evolutionary? I think it's revolutionary. Revolutionary. Yeah, re okay, revolutionary. revolutionary. So yeah. revolutionary. So it's not, but but it's technically me building off of what I grew up on and mm -hmm. see. 
So like so nothing like that, new, like, you're just adding some a little bit different flair to well, it. Well, well, yeah. also you got this too, like this this technique right here, the um, call out, the scene with the little head, like mm -hmm. him, where there's his body, like there his body's right there, but then you do a call out button. That's a call out. That's a call out panel. That's something just to show people who's talking. You yeah. know, some person may just try to draw those guys, but what I want to do, because when you're dealing with distance, I'm thinking in my head, if I'm watching this in a movie and we're seeing this massive mining machine, then these guys will be little bitty images to it because I want to give a sense of scale. Mm -hmm. So then how do you, you get that scale in there? Well, you do a call out button. They did that back in the day and it's effective. I find it to be effective technique. But yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah, uh, the, the robots are on the surface of the planet. Mm -hmm. uh although i will say you have given me a very good idea like the idea of like robots hollowing out a planet in order to, like like people oh, man, I, be, I, be, Cody, I better get Cody. some, I better get some oh, co, no. co, co credits or uh -oh. something Cody, uh -oh. See, this, i mean this is it He's bringing different, in stuff in. <laughs> different well no no like 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 this this series is set in stone like you're not you're not watching the the book change before your eyes like yeah. the, the the book is set we know mm -hmm. what happens we know how it works but like the idea of people hollowing out a planet in order to live with it, like that, you know, I've, I need some other stuff. Mm -hmm. Like you know, so you know, if, also, if, if 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 that winds up happening, you know, you know where it came from. Well, at least, yeah. <laughs> well, another, another thing I want to add is that as as a person who grew up on the seventies and eighties, I I don't know, but I loved the vibrant colors. Mm -hmm. When I when the comics mm, back yes. then. They popped out. Like I remember going to like a, you go to, to into an LCS local comic book shop, and you walk in and it would just be colors. Yep. <laughs> they would just be like your eyes would be like it's like candy. Like you go, oh my god, look I see it, and, and it was very powerful. And so for, for me, um, I love that sense of boldness um, and bringing in. Ideally, my dream would be if young people can get to get a uh, uh, comic. As much as people are, you know. It, you know, to, who are in their twenties or in thirties, you know, and then our age or whatever. But I definitely would love for younger people to get into it. Like at the age I was, was when I was a teenager, mm -hmm. and when I picked it up, and what I when I was reading Conan the Barbarian, you know, or reading the X Men, or reading Fantastic Four, and whatever, you know, that that would be my dream. Somebody young who looks at it and goes, "Oh wow, man, that's really cool, man. I'm, okay, I'm gonna start drawing and whatever, and that kind of thing. That that would be my dream." I love I love that panel. I like the, the the one where like the so so the 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 robot with the with the beard's name is Doc. Um, mm -hmm. that, yeah, that's what they, we call a new, a new a new reveal. A new okay. <laughs> well, you 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 find yeah. you find out you find out. But like him looking up at the hunter and yeah. like oh man, I saw that. I was like Frankie, this is amazing. So is this uh I mean how, how big is the hunter compared to the robots like is he like th on the same scale or is he because right here I mean um, you can kind of see Doc is like kneeling down but he still looks like he's pretty monstrous in comparison. Well, well on his card on the card he's six five. Okay. He's six, yeah five. yeah the the, the like in, in terms of scale like you know like I said like you know the the ti the, the David and Goliath the tiny thing standing up yeah. to the big thing, and so like you know we we did want the hunter to be you know human mm -hmm. sized uh but you know capable of you know you know finding his way up to the the kaiju's face and punch and you know punching it in the eyeball or so something. frankie yes. were you the one were you the one that came up with the character design for the hunter or was it matt yes it was me mm -hmm. I, I was gonna ask because drawing yeah. the hair must have been tedious for yes. you no well that was the thing it was like when when i um what when i did the design again it was based off of i loved jet jaguar from the toho uh, godzilla movies mm -hmm. i loved clint eastwood as the man with no name and i loved machine man the jack kirby version of machine man and so when i had those those three images in my head i just mashed them together and my and my first my, out right off the door i had that look and it was funny because i actually drew another version of the uh of uh and it, 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 b when i shorten it it's the bot with no name but it's b when uh, that's how we call it that's how i call him um mm -hmm. and, and i did another version and i told matt i said well matt what do you think do you like this version a new version he said no i hate it i like the old one <laughs> which was this one this version that you see and so we stuck with that one because it has a much more power i love his eyes i love the fact mm -hmm. that he has these intense eyes staring at you um he definitely is supposed to represent 
um, a lot of that old school characters, the stuff that I grew up on. Like um, mm -hmm. now, if people talk about manga, I I love Mazinga Z. I love a lot of the classic Gonage stuff. And his the way his um, hat is, his um, well, yeah, his hat is. He has those symbols. That's supposed to be my sort of homage to that old school um, design. With this it's mask. iconic it's too, almost too, because you get yeah, the, the hat's right. like its own symbol. Exactly, exactly. And so what I was gonna say, like when I think of when I'm drawing um, the the uh, Bwin as he's battling these kajus, my first thought I think was Spider Man, mm -hmm. like when Spider Man battled the Juggernaut or the Hulk. And I go, when Spider-Man battles these massive characters, he's confident in his own skills and abilities. And that's why he's able to hold them off. Now, I don't know if Spider-Man Spider had to try to prolong a battle or prolong battle with the Hulk or Juggernaut. Most likely he might lose. He, you know, something will happen where he probably, he, he can't outlast him. But in the short run, I think Spider-Man could do some damage. He could do enough to, to cause some problems with them. So when uh... I thought of p what? He can flip I, tanks. Can, like, yeah, yeah, yeah but I, mean, I mean, it depends. It I, depends on how pissed the hawk is, though. You know what well, I mean? Yeah, yeah. But see, here, here's the thing. I, I'm not a huge fan. Like, I, I, I've been reading some of the new stuff for the Hulk, and I, I don't know. I, again, I'm so old school. This whole thing where the Hulk turns into he's like this this galactic machine engine that goes in other dimensions. I, 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 I have not read I, any. I, I read I, uh I, like I, World yeah, War Hawk is like about yeah. as far as I've gone. He, he, I, him, I, able, him able to punch the earth and split it open. I, I'm just like, dude, I, I'm more the old school, the old school stuff where the Hulk, he got big. He, he, he was a rage machine for a little bit and then he gets tired. He'll get tired or whatever to a certain degree. And so when he would battle, like when I would see the battle, like the famous battle between uh, Spider-Man and Juggernaut, for instance. And eventually Spider-Man did. He ended up, the, the Juggernaut uh, dropped the whole building on him. Uh, or was whatever. that the and one where he destroyed the World Trade Center? Was that the one? I know it was a building. It was like this because he was going after the X-Men or something and um, Spider-Man got in the way. And Spider-Man literally grabs a girder and he, he webs up this thing and he sort of slingshots a girder at him. So he holds his own. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, he's holding yeah, his yeah. own against him because he knows his skills and abilities. That's what B-Win is. B-Win can hold his own to a certain degree. Even his dreadlocks. His dreadlocks are not like I said, and, and, and I don't know if Matt knows, but I said that his key thing is that he has his brain. So his, if his brain got destroyed, then I believe that would be the death of it. But his dreadlocks move. Like I think of in the terms of, um, remember the creatures from uh, Matrix, like the, the squid creatures, how they move the, the tentacles? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's his dreadlocks. Uh, Sentinels, I think? The Sentinels. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. yeah. Or, like the, or like the guy, remember the, the famous scene from the movie John Carpenter's The Thing? Yeah, And like yeah, the, head, yeah. the head's on the ground moving. I can, I can see an image of that. Like his head gets, say if his body got so damaged and his head, he's trying to save his brain. Literally, you see the dreadlocks kind of pulling him, you know, the safety and stuff. See, so he's his whole body is one big mechanism um, that can that functions for survival. So he's quite adept and using it. Now, could he go for a prolonged battle against something that's really massive and gigantic? I don't know. You know, that's 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 therein lies the question. I tell you one thing, it'd be one hell of a battle to draw. <laughs> I would love to illustrate that. I, I love how Frankie comes from like an animation background and he's like, yeah, yeah these these hair, this hair moves. That'd be like an animator's nightmare. <laughs> yeah. It moves just a little like like you think it's like the wind, but also like I think of my dreadlocks, like you suddenly will see something move just a little bit. It would it would be like this subtle kind of thing. Like clearly there there'll be some wind moving. Mm -hmm. So it moves it. But I just love that eerie sense that you know that these are cables. And that they're kind of moving around and stuff. And they in look the like zero, they plug into stuff too. Well, in the zero issue, we did. We had them plug into a um a actual robot uh female, a fembot, who was Ooh. damaged. Like it's just her head. Yeah, her head was the only thing that was remaining. And then he plugged in to read what was going on. Like he comes into this town and then he plugs into her to find out what's going on. And he goes, Oh, okay, this is what happened to this town. This town got destroyed by Kaju. So yeah, he has he has his tech. He has his weapons. He has his ability because, like the the hunter, has been doing this for a very long time. Yeah, yeah. He is he is, if not the first, one of the first uh, robots to be put on this planet to to uh, th like this was his this is his function. Mm -hmm. um, and if worse comes to worse, and you you find out later in the issue, um, like if he you know. Well, another another great thing Frankie does. Uh, another th another thing that uh, we did write in is that he is vulnerable. Like you know that there are moments where you know 
you know, he's he's going up against like if you scroll up, um, yeah, that that kaiju, th that wall is about what oh, fifty God. feet high. Oh yeah, it's massive. Yeah, it's just yeah, the, the the <laughs> wall is massive, and the kaiju went through it just like it was nothing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the hunter has to face that. Like you yeah. do not go up against something like that and not, you know, not not come out perfect. Yeah, like, yeah. Know, he he does he does get ripped apart. Oh you know, yeah. He does you know, oh, yeah. he, you know he loses limbs and all that. Yeah. But he also has uh, repair abilities as well. Yeah. And so like you know like he 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 he's capable. He's mm -hmm. very good. Yeah. Uh, but you know he's not perfect. And yeah, you, you, know, you he, want a character he need, you can root he needs for. Help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want a you want a character that you can root for. Like when I used to watch westerns, you see the guy go in. I mean, even in the Clint Eastwood ones or the spaghetti westerns, they would get their butt kicked. The hero, and the yeah. whole mm -hmm. point of it was the hero get his butt kicked, and then he comes back. You know, he gets yeah. beat down, get beat Dragon down. Drop, logic. <laughs> yeah, drop, 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 dropped into a, a graveyard or something. Next thing you know, he's digging himself up, and he's like, mm -hmm. I'm, gonna get, "I'm gonna get those curs." You know, and he no, I back, love he it. Goes, I love and it. You start rooting. You go, <laughs> "Yeah, he's gonna come back." Hey, like I said, that's the kind of stuff I love. I'm not, you know, as much as um, I, you know, I, I, you know, I, I look at some mangas and stuff like that, and and people love this sense of power. It just when you make a character so powerful, me as an artist, I, I don't I, I don't know where I could have the fun in mm -hmm. drawing that. If I had to draw a character that punches a character and then obliterates them, then where's the fun in that? Yeah. There's no there's no I can't who do I root for? Well, someone's like, not a one punch man fan. Oh no, I see I own them. <laughs> I see, I, I, nope, that's that's not true. Here you go. I know, I know. I'm 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 a, a little bit out of I know, I know. I'm just messing with you, but I, I love actually funny part. I actually love One One Punch Man because I love I love the way that the writing was done. Um, I thought it was engaging. I thought it was fun, and so that's a you know you know it's it's almost like I'll take I'll give a I'll give a good instance. There's a um a, a, a anime called Goren Lagan. The first yes. Season, the first, well, see here you go. You maybe you maybe the first season I, I was like okay. I went along with it. I said okay, cool. Second season lost me. To this day, I refuse to even watch it because one of the things about it that really got to me was the scene where they started throwing galaxies at each other. There was one scene where all of a sudden they turned into these cosmic characters and they're throwing galaxies. And, and, and that was that moment where my brain just said, I can't, I, I, I can't get into this. Yeah. I, spoilers, I, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you haven't seen, <laughs> you it, haven't seen it, it's spoilers. been years, it's been years it's been out, but I'm sorry about it, folks. But there, there's certain things where I, I'm just one of those people where there's a level of groundness like I'm one of those guys where I love two fisted tails. If you gave me um, two individuals scrapping it out, and I can root, then I love that stuff. I don't need to have mm -hmm. a character bench pressing. They used to do that with, the, with Superman. Superman. I remember having seen Superman books where Superman would move the Earth. He would just push the Earth away, and it was just so. It was like, oh my God. I remember once Superman moved the Moon. You know, and it was like they, they had to come a point where you gotta knock the powers down so that. Mm -hmm. Now we can enjoy. Now we can say, okay, he has weaknesses. He can't breathe in space. Um, he needs solar energy. Um, he's not as strong. Like I love the fact that when they, they incorporated the fact that he, um, when he lifts something, he generates a, a sort of gravitational field around stuff. So it's not really his super strength, even though he does have a super strength. But he's also keeping things together in light, and light, and it's light and holding it together. And I was like, that makes sense. That's kind yeah. of. Yeah, I think uh, Mark Wade talked about that. Uh, John Byrne. John Byrne introduced that. I think John Byrne introduced that in his um, short yeah. run. When he was well, yeah, because I, I remember reading uh, reading about. Uh, I, I remember reading uh, Irredeemable, which wasn't mm -hmm. Superman, but it's, you know, it's a Superman yeah. proxy by yeah. Know, yeah. Superman by any other name. Yeah. And like you know, they, they, you know, Wade talked about that. Um, but yeah, like I mean, you know, with with Superman, like you know, the the animated series, like they they, they yeah. did do that, like they like oh, amazing, and all the, yeah, and it's fantastic. And like, <laughs> they yeah. they went like like I remember in interviews, I think I think it was Bruce Timm. He was talking about like how they they did have to weaken him, mm -hmm. uh, oh. but at you the same but at the same man. time, but at the same time. Uh, you know, S Superman is Superman is my favorite superhero. So, in oh. case anyone wants to wants to know that question, oh, remember, um, remember that scene? I'm, I'm sorry, remember the scene when um, when Turpin gets killed by Darkseid? Oh, man! Yeah, he gets blasted, and Superman just loses it. And yeah, Darkseid, yeah, Darkseid hits him with the Omega Beam. I know. Sorry about it, Cody. 
<laughs> oh no, you're good. You're good. You're he gets, good. He gets, he gets hit with the he gets hit with the um, omega beam, and then and then he sort of smirks, and then he goes back into the boom tube, and Superman just leaves it. No, and he just beats the crap out of that um apocalyptic uh, tank. Oh, dude, I'm telling you, I don't know if you ever seen the Injustice storyline. But they yes. put a bomb in Lois Lane, and then yes. uh, so yeah. so Superman like flies her up without realizing that yes. that's what's gonna kill her, and then he like punches through the Joker. Yep, I dude, yeah, loved yeah. it. There, there, there was that uh, animated movie. Um, it was uh, Batman and Superman. Like they have to go and rescue Supergirl from Apocalypse. Uh, there's there's a great scene with Wonder Woman taking on the Furies like that like that that was fantastic. Yes, but, like, yes, yes. Yeah, you're right. Yep, yep. And at the very end, it is uh, Superman and Darkseid in Smallville uh, uh, at the Kent farm, mm -hmm. and like it is it is Superman just losing his mind and yes. just beating. But the the the, the best scene. The best scene ever uh, of Superman throwing up, throwing down against Darkseid is mm -hmm. the end of Justice League Unlimited, and it's it's oh. the, the the series finale, and okay. like you know, okay. you, um, I'm trying you know, to remember uh, it. Oh, so oh, don't worry, I um, oh, I know I have those. I have those. Yeah, I was just say how many how many garbage it. trucks does Matt have around him? <laughs> it's, it's garbage day. They're gonna clean uh, that area up. <laughs> but yeah, no, no, no. Uh, don't don't worry, don't worry, Frankie. I I will tell you. It is right. the series finale of Justice Justice League yep. Unlimited, and Darkseid has invaded Earth, and it is all hands on deck. The villains have said we will work with you. You know, it's a global threat, and you know, you know, we're we're gonna uh, all differences put aside. We are, you know. We're teaming up. And so it's Batman, Superman, and Lex Luthor at the Daily Planet. And uh, Luthor, uh, and like, like, and like, like, Darkseid attempts to blast Batman with the Omega Beams, and Batman dodges them. And Darkseid's like, well, that's rather impressive. I don't think you could do it a second time. <laughs> uh, and then uh, Superman comes in and like, like he, he gets quiet and he gets very serious and i i remember the speech like it was yesterday he says uh that man will not give up as long as he has breath in his body none of my teammates will me i have a different problem i feel like i live in a world made of cardboard always being careful not to break something yeah. not to break someone yeah. yes you know yes. always being careful or someone could die yes. but you can take it can't you big man what we yeah. have here is a chance for me to cut loose and show you how powerful i really am and then he sends Darkseid through half of Metropolis. Yes! And it's like, yes. <laughs> so we this have uh, John. Amazing. We have John oh, Freeman man. over on YouTube. Loving the comic talk. Spider versus Juggernaut. What a great John, analogy for battling Kaiju. Hello. Superman's power levels create all kinds of storytelling challenges and possibilities. Really enjoying your takes. You, you know, I loved when we had Superboy Prime. Uh, he was yep. so strong, he was able to break through reality with one punch. <laughs> So there, he had the reality breaking punch, uh, where he, he just like literally was so strong he broke reality. And what was that? Infinite Crisis, I think. Oh my god. Or uh, I, I, yeah. I might be off. Yeah. Uh, I think it's around those, but literally was so insane. I mean, I you could even go to uh, Batman. Uh, what is it? Dark Knight Metals, where yeah. uh, Barbados has a tower of Superman from all different uh, multiverses, uh, powering up this tower with all these Superman. It's just it's ridiculous, you know. I love it. Yeah, it's like I I, I don't know what's gonna be. How do you top stuff like that? Like like again, I've been looking at you know listening to the Hulk and stuff, and they're like he's like this he's he's like a device now for Bruce Banner, I guess, and Bruce is controlling them, and now the Hulk. Is traveling through universes and he's he's like you know it's, it's like what the I, I i don't know how you talk this stuff it's like it's mm -hmm. just he's you, know, you don't you reset it and start again and with a number yeah. one in like every, you know every, every couple of years which you know, I, mean, I, I do think i do think we thing. have to get back to the campaign though yes, um, yes. So, anyway, i love what, comic what, talk your, what, just as much as the next guy what, yeah we're showing our fanboy our fan, which is, <laughs> that's our whole thing we, we are fanboys yes that's, yes we're yes fanboys. 
So yes, talk um, to, reach out to us on Twitter. Like if, if you want to like, you know, I, I, you know, I could talk about this sort of stuff all day. So like, you know, if, if you have any questions for Frankie or me or Cody, yeah. like, you know, yeah, yeah. Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> yes, please chat up. So let's get back to the cafe. That was a good talk though. I love those conversations. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at some of the add-ons uh, a little bit more close up. So here's yeah. the sticker three pack. Yes. Then down below mm -hmm. we have that patch and yeah, that is a beautiful, beautiful. and detailed patch beautiful. as well. Oh, that there, iconic face. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then some of the early bird special trading cards as well. Yeah. That's right. Yep. Yeah, we, we we originally wanted to be cute and offer it as uh you know something of available to you know people who donated donated in the first twenty four hours, but I I think we changed our minds. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He can run pretty fast though. Speed, uh, fifty to one hundred and fifty miles per hour. Holy Ooh, crap! This guy is yeah. not messing He's around. I think th you think about it, but, but again, it, it, you know, it depends on how much power level you got to mm -hmm. be. Like you know, it's not like he can sustain that for a long period. It's just like you know, like you, you a good burst, and then all of a sudden it's like energy level is depleted. <laughs> and then it looks well, like right here is a uh, battle damage too. It looks like his arms are missing. No, that's no, right. that that's well, that that's also the. Um, uh yeah. that, that that that's the power up that's the uh you know the the setting yourself before the before you charge because like yeah. like you know how like in you know like a, a manga like you'll have like you know the the screaming before the screaming and the, the mm -hmm. there's light and yeah. you know all that stuff you know that that's what th that that's what that is like you know it's the it, it it's the, the the it's the sign that something big is about to happen yeah. And you know, I, I incidentally, I did not write this. This was all Frankie. Oh. Like, you know, like <laughs> yeah, because yeah, yeah. The, oh, the, the steam yeah. coming out that that that's that's Frankie's. Uh, yeah. that, that's fr uh, all Frankie. And it's like, yes, this is perfect. And yeah. like, you know, we're we're at a point in our working relationship where it's like, I will give Frankie a script page, a page of script, mm -hmm. and like, you know, Frankie will come back and most of the time it's you know a, a, as i wrote it yeah. but you know every every now and then frankie will have something that you know you know something something that makes it you know a little bit different and like you know changes it around a little bit yeah. and i like we're at a point right now where it's like i'll see that and be like all right yes that does yeah. make it better that yeah, does and make I write it notes. You know, yeah and i give notes on it too that's how thorough yeah. i am like i don't yeah. just like my thumbnails are pretty tight so what happens is, is once I submit my thumbnails to, to Matthew, then all of a sudden I'll also write in, I'll do a detailed analysis of why I did it. And I'll be like, yeah, well, yeah, this scene right here needed this. I took this out and whatever. So it's not like I'm just changing things just to change it. I want him to understand where my thought was. Mm -hmm. And then if he comes back and goes, well, okay, Frank, I see that. If you need to tweak this or whatever, that that's the kind of, you know, kind of thing that we have. And 95% of the time, it actually winds up making the story better. The other 5% of the time, it just keeps every, it keeps everything at the at the same, you know, at, yeah, at the same level. But like mm -hmm. an overwhelming majority of the time, I like, like Frankie has come up with ideas where I'm like, yes, yes, this is fantastic. <laughs> I want to make, you know, you know, I can, you know, we can work with this. And, and like, I you love know, scrapping and I love that B when one of the big things for me is I, I've, I said it before on, on various shows too. I, although I love, let me just say that I love the um, Terminators, endo, the endo um, skeletons and stuff like that. But something about robots holding guns in their hands has always sort of, you know, mm, you know, I'm just like, eh. so for me personally, I think that all weaponry, if, especially if you're a robot should be incorporated in your body. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why he has his gun hand. He has his hands that are, they fold up and then his guns inside of it. That's that whole machine man part where machine man and all these interesting things, devices hidden in there. But one of the things about, um, uh, about b -Win is the fact that he, um, I, I, I wanted to show that he can scrap, you know, he's, he's got scrap in him. Like he'll, he'll come out, he'll punch, he'll be like, whatever. And then he'll use his guns if he need to. Mm -hmm. The the fig the the kaiju that he is punching in this print, incidentally, uh, that's the size of a horse. Yeah. So you know the actually a little bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
yeah, the, the 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 fists come out for like the the small to medium size mm-hmm. yeah. monsters, and like the guns and tech comes out for the the big ones. Yeah, I really like this print too. There's a, a whole bunch of different kaiju in here. I mean, well, I, yeah, I just mm-hmm. put a bunch in there. I yeah. just put a bunch in there. Mm-hmm. So, are we we'll gonna see. see these throughout the the issues? We'll or we'll, I got gotcha. you. We'll that's that's one of those things where you know I just said I, I just need fillers, and mm-hmm. I was like like that character right there. Pull scroll down, scroll up a little bit. I'm sorry. And they see the character with the blue nose. Yeah. The blue sort of horn. That character appeared on the cover of the issue zero. Okay. So he was on the cover. So, I mean, the other characters in there, I just sort of just put in there. But you never know. You know, that's so the thing. That's here the is uh, the hand-drawn card from Frankie as well. The sketch yeah. card sample. To give you an that idea what that's going to look yeah. like. Yeah. And that was sort of like a classic sort of fade where he's sort of hovering. Again, that's an old technique from comic books back in the day, where which I love, which I want to do. I know that there's going to come a scenario where we're going to have something hovering in the sky. Remember how they used to do Doctor Doom? And he'll be like hovering in the sky and looking down <laughs> on the city. I'm like, Matt, we got to do it. Something's going to mm-hmm. come up where I'm going to be like, that's going to work for that. <laughs> it's gonna and then here are some it. of the original art pages that's yeah. available for sale as well. Yeah. And then the the cover as well. This is gorgeous, yeah. Yeah. Yep. And then we have the bio. Uh, do you guys want to maybe give a little bit about yourselves? I uh, we kind of took a little bit of a deep dive earlier, but if you guys want to give a little bit of recap, what's here? Sure. Uh, are, we, are we reading from there? Or? Uh, you, you could summarize it if you want to too. Yeah, I well, mean, I, I, most most of what I talked about is already there. But I mean, yeah, I, I you know, like like. Like most of us in this wonderful little hobby of ours, I, I wasn't exactly the most sociable human being on the face of the planet. Uh, but you know, it, 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 you know the, the great thing about having no social life is that you really get to like you know take you know look inwards and like you you know you, you get to you know work you know work on yourself and mm-hmm. work with yourself, and like you know, so so the job that I'm working. Like I'm on my like it's it's twelve hour shifts and like I'm I work in manufacturing like I make parts for things and like it's very repetitive very monotonous and I'm at a point right now where I can just sort of retreat into my mind and like you know I'll I do like my best I like some of my best ideas I've ever come up with are when I'm at work and it's <laughs> like you know take my phone out write write it down mm-hmm. and then you know what goes on from there. Like I, I have a, an entire document on my computer. That's just like filled with log lines. Like oh, nice. there's, there's this, we've got, you know, you know, a, a prequel series to Kaijus and Cowboys, you know, yep. the, the Frank, the Frankie and I were originally working on, uh, there's the secret lives of villains. Um, I have, uh, there's the, okay. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, Matt. Say it, say it. So hey, there's one. there's there's another series that I am working on that yes. has art that Frankie has seen, yes. but I have sworn him to secrecy. Um, that is going to be uh, published through a publisher that everyone knows, but I, I, I'm, not, I'm not exactly sure uh, if I can talk about it right now. Uh, but we're we're going to be doing I'm going to be doing a kick, uh, crowdfunding campaign for that. Soon. That's awesome, dude! So, Congratulations. Cody, I will. I will be. Uh, Sounds very know, heavy to me. Touch. Sounds very heavy to me. Oh. Mm. Mm. Okay. <laughs> okay. Frankie dropping a little, a little, a little <laughs> bit of the juice there. A little bit of the juice. But what, yeah. what about you, Frankie? Well, what about you? Well, compl- well, you know, hey man, I'm an extrovert. <laughs> no, no, I'm just, I'm just a guy who, you know, I grew up in Boston. And uh, had always had an active imagination. Um, you know, I watched watched uh, Creature Double Feature, people from Boston area. Creature Double Feature used to watch Force Five. Loved um, drawing. That was that mm-hmm. was one of the things. I'm so fortunate that I had teachers in school who, uh, especially during high school, who saw that inside of me. Because at that oh, age, that's I, awesome. was, I thought I was all over the place. I was like, yeah, I'm going to be in the Air Force. I'm going to be a robotic <laughs> engineer. I, on my mind, I, math, I wasn't the greatest in math, but everything else I was pretty decent in. But my teachers saw that I was very um, creative, imaginative, and that I loved drawing. And so they sort of put me in programs um, that was, you know, art related. 
And I was doing programs. I remember like, you know, going to, well, it's time mass art, like on Saturdays, going to mass art programs. And then they had me do the half school day kind of program. And then, and then another half day at this, this other program where it was just for illustration. So that when I eventually graduated from art school in 1988, I had a scholarship. I was one of a few uh, students who got a scholarship. Blew my mind. I didn't know. Yeah, that's awesome. It was, a, it was the weirdest thing where I remember they were like, Mr. Washington. I was like, yeah. They said, come with me. So I'm walking with this adult man, <laughs> and so I'm like, "Oh man, what did I do?" Like you know, yeah, you go I'm through in your head. And I was like, did I do? <laughs> what? I'm trying to remember anything that I did, right? And they put me in this room, and there was all these adults sitting at a table, and so I'm like, "Shit, I'm sweating and everything." I and fucked said, up big. They said, they, they, yeah. <laughs> I, I was like, "I did something. I did something, and I can't remember what I did, and I'm in trouble." And they just were like, "Well, we'd like to congratulate you. You're one of the scholars that got this scholarship. So where do you want to go?" And I was like, what? And they were like, yeah, you, you got a scholarship. So then I started looking at schools. And this funny thing was that I actually got contacted by the Joe Kubert School. Joe wow. Kubert contacted me, contacted. Um, there was another school too, a design school, ar architectural school. I went to go there and I just thought that I was like, I'm not an architect. I'm not, I don't have that kind of, that kind of way of thinking. So I was like, that's, I'll pass on that. I didn't want to go to mass art just because I felt that mass art was more geared toward, at the time, was more geared toward um, being a teacher. Mm -hmm. I really wasn't thinking about being a teacher. I just wanted, at the time, I just wanted to draw comics. But then I didn't want to go to New Jersey. <laughs> you know, that's where Joe Kubert was located. And I really didn't want to leave Massachusetts. I was afraid. I'll be honest. I was like, I don't want to leave. I was scared it'd be another place. Yeah. And so another school popped up. And this school was the Butera School of Art. It doesn't exist anymore. Um, but Butera School of Art was a commercial illustration school, half sign painting school. And it was one of the few schools on the East Coast that did sign painting. That means like they literally went out, those people that would paint on uh, vans or do yeah. signs, hand lettering. I mean, phenomenal work. And so when I went there, um, I remember that the person who interviewed me was like, look, they said, we want you to understand that we are going to teach you to be a working artist. And I was like, okay. They were like, no, no, no. We are going to teach you to make money, a living being a working artist. So if you want to be another kind of artist, then we're not the school for you. And so I was like, no, I think this is the school for me because I want yeah. to how to make. I want to make a. I want to make money, you know, doing what I do best. I, I have a skill, and so I want to be able to do that. And that's what they did. So it's funny because I, I had to do assignments where we had to sit mm -hmm. up, and pitch, pitch to the class, you know, and be all nervous and scared. <laughs> you know, we had to do stuff because they were trying to prepare us for working out in the um art industry and that's and mm -hmm. i always tell artists who contact me i go you have to look at the art industry in a whole yeah i know you may want to be a comic book artist but being a comic book artist um it is technically if you're gonna look if you're gonna visualize it i visualize it as being like a river as a river that connects to the vast ocean that's the art industry yeah and the thing is is that for me i want to have a portfolio that was going to represent the art industry. I wanted to have a portfolio that was eclectic. It had enough in there so that when somebody looked at it, they would be like, yeah, he could do storyboards. Mm -hmm. um, this guy could do toys. He could do trading cards. He could do comics. He could do, you know, so, such and such, whatever. And that that was always my goal, to have a very eclectic kind of portfolio. So then that, that led me down the path of working in film, animation, advertising. Um, I also did illustrations for RPG game. Uh, magazines. Wow. Yeah, I looked into that yeah. one. I, I'm not a huge uh, RPG game player, um, but I but I could draw. I could draw dragons. <laughs> and so no, absolutely. I, I, did, I did a couple of gigs doing that. And then another stuff, I actually did another thing was I worked on a trading card set for um, Colossal Kaiju Combat, which was supposed to be a video game that came out years ago. And uh, Matt Frank actually was part of it as well. And um, I did, I worked on their card sets as well. That was another one of those things where I sort of fell into that and did a ton of that so many you know so i just been it's been a consistent thing for me i'm just happy that i'm able to be doing illustrations in a genre that i am very passionate about i, I you know i love i love all kind of other stuff i've drawn other kind of things outside of um kajus and giant robots i mean put that mm -hmm. in it too but it just feels good that this genre is starting to, it has a huge spotlight right now um because of godzilla and because of Power Rangers and because of Ultraman and stuff like that. So I love the spotlight. All I'm saying is that it would be nice for some of, 
some of those 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 lights can just flicker down on us and yeah. out there. You know, that's all. We, we just, just want a little bit. We just need yeah. just want a little bit. We just we, we, we just need the We're not scraps. asking for a lot. We, yeah. just, we just want it to be like just a little, like a little darkened area. Just a little bit of light, like a little sunbeam. Little speck, yeah, yeah. And you go, oh, look what's over there. Those guys. <laughs> no, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So here are the stretch goals as well. So for $3,000, everyone who ordered a physical copy of the book gets their cover upgraded to the Zoop exclusive cover. The uh, the yep. print, uh, that's the print that we've seen uh, up above, right? Yep. Every okay. Story. Well, no, no, it's, it's no, something. It's different, yeah. yeah, it's, oh, yeah, it's a different. different cover. No, yeah, okay. The, 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 print, the print is its own separate thing. Like, yeah. like we, we, we did this off, um, like we, we based a lot of the rewards off of what we did for the Kickstarter mm -hmm. and for the, what the Kickstarter was, it was $5 digital copy, $10 physical, physical copy, 15, uh, physical copy plus choice of patch stickers or print 25, yeah. uh, patch stickers, print and comic. And then a stretch goal, which we got was, um, Everyone twenty five dollars and up gets their uh, cover upgraded to a special exclusive cover. Okay. So that that like that that's what we base that off yeah. of, and that's and, then, and that's what we're doing as well. So yes, no, that's awesome. The yeah. uh, the 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 cover is different mm -hmm. uh, okay. from what? Yeah. So. And then we have at four thousand dollars a three pack uh, of trading cards, including the hunter Doc and his noble steed, and yes, then at uh, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Which, which if yeah, which, which if we we made the four thousand, then we we would probably add in something else, add in the extra like card or something like there. Okay. You know, and like then add so. five thousand. Every physical backer gets the prequel comic in addition to the original. So I think that's really cool too. Throwing in yeah. uh, issue zero along with issue one. Yeah. Well, no, well, no, 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 not not exactly. Uh, the issue zero was what we did the Kickstarter for, and um, the the prequel comic that's a stretch goal is something that hasn't been seen. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, so, I think, yeah, I think from this experience, me and Matthew have been talking. And yeah. I think one of the things about it is that what I've learned from it is that I think that we're approaching it from the standpoint of people knowing about Kaijus and Cowboys. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. that if, if anything, after this whole experience, and I've, I've, I've mentioned this to Matthew, Matthew as well, is that we need to try to get as much information about Kaijus and ca Cowboys out there to people. So that means that any prequels, any stuff that we have, like so, so, so we got the zero issue, we got one. We also mm -hmm. have another story that's already. This is already drawn up and done. We yes, need all to of the artwork stuff. is done. Yeah, so we need this. We need to start putting stuff. So depending what, what however this goes, the Zoop mm -hmm. campaign goes, which you know we feel very strong about. Um, whatever new attempt that we try afterwards, we're gonna try to add more stuff because I think it's, it's it comes down now to people getting more information, more yeah. information about this, instead of trying to hold it back. Because technically we are, we're, we're nowhere in the league of, of Godzilla. We're nowhere in the league of Mighty, Mighty, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers or Ultraman or any fight. And we're not trying to delude ourselves with that. So yeah. the thing is that, cause we're starting from, we're, we're an infant. I call it the infant IP. Mm -hmm. So having an infant IP, we need to be able to give people um, something more. We got to give them something more so that they can get something to latch and latch them onto it. So then they can say, okay, we want to invest in the future of this. And then yeah, that's yeah. when we feel that then, then we can you pull them in with the more stories because we still got a lot of more stuff too. So we're building, it's almost like we're stockpiling, but stockpiling mm -hmm. stuff. But now we got to start getting stuff out there to people. So that's no, the absolutely. huge lesson, the huge, huge lesson I know that I've taken from this experience right now. Mm -hmm. on this particular campaign yeah we, we we tried we tried to get a little cute with uh it, you know keeping it exclusive and like you know keeping supply limited uh but yeah like like frankie said like we yeah. the, the 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 biggest lesson we've taken from this is that like you know the the the, the exclusive you know 50 copies of this you know get yeah. them while they're gone that that comes later yeah. Um, I, I think that for any person out here who wants to try to do any crowdfunding, I think that um, you should give as much as you can. A lot of information. I've seen other people say this, too. Um, if you have a comic book, show your pages. Don't, mm -hmm. don't show everything. But, you know, six pages is pretty good in your cover. Um, make sure that you're offering enough stuff so, so that it can latch, so people can latch on to something. And then, you know, once they got that nice, healthy feeling, now you can start thinking about pacing yourself. You know, I don't think you need to do every campaign where you're like, well, here you go. Let me vomit everything at you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you don't need to vomit everything. 
but you need to be able to give people just enough so that then they can go, okay, I'm going to come back for this and come back for more and more and whatever and such and such. So it's all about the pacing, but this has been this whole experience overall is a, it's a huge positive to me. I know. Yes. And where I've learned, and that's what you got to look at things like this. This is a mm -hmm. learning experience. And so, you know, it is. And for the love of all that's holy, have as much of your project completed before you yes. even start talking that's what we about did it. yes we do were not already, under any yeah. circumstance like like because it, it is like i've seen people like raise a lot of money off yeah. of books and then nothing happens for exactly. like a year yeah and that is death yeah we have yep. like, we have we have up the issue four drawn out Oh yeah, yeah. We have we the the whole twelve issues are all plotted out. We all we know what happens. I have uh, the script, like ninety five percent of the script for issue six done. Yeah. Uh, the script for issue five is complete. Uh, I got all it. of the all of the artwork for uh you know uh, for issue four uh, issues one through four is all done mm -hmm. and uh we're at a point where like we can just get like the lettering done so it's like yeah it's 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 yeah. all there it's okay all there. We, yeah we strategized i think that's one of the things as I, I told matthew i said we have to approach this from the standpoint of production and production like a film you think of a film mm -hmm. company and you see films and people go well you know why does it take a year for the movie to come out well i mean there's a lot of stuff going on i mean they, they you know they got to film the stuff then they got to do editing you post know, production. And, and post, mm -hmm. well, there you go. Post production, uh, marketing. You know, all that stuff is being done during all that time. And and I always tell um, any person who's going to create a comic, don't rush yourself. Just because you saw somebody else do something, don't follow what the Jones are doing. You mm -hmm. need to sit there and be realistic. If it if it takes you three months to do your comic, then that's three months. That's a fair enough time. If it takes you six months, okay, fine. Depending on the level of detail you got in it, but be realistic and also factor in that time where sick days because if you're going to be realistic let's think of this in the term of business think of six di sick days because someone may get sick if you depend on what your team is they may get sick um or whatever something may come into their lives that might affect it those are why you put that extra time so it's like mm -hmm. a buffer so that you're not like you know pressuring yourself pressuring the team and then everybody starts freaking out the last minute they go oh my god oh my god i gotta get everything done in two weeks <laughs> it's like oh okay because the thing about it is that the end result is that you're putting on a quality project, a, a mm -hmm. product that everyone can feel good about. I want, I'm so tired of seeing amazing, I've seen books where writers, the stories look amazing, but you could tell the art was rushed. Yeah. You know, and it's like, oh, and, and I, I sit there and I, in the back of my head, I'm thinking and going, okay, this writer who's probably put everything they had into writing that, now they got artwork that doesn't somehow mesh in a certain degree, in a good harmonious mesh with that the written word and vice versa mm -hmm. same thing where if the artwork is really you know well done but then the writing looks like it's just you know whatever it hasn't yeah been, yeah hasn't, hasn't been edited right um typos everywhere mm -hmm. all that stuff lettered right so it's like you want to be able to have that time to do your edits you want to be able to um be able to have something where everyone on the team can sit back and go okay whatever the case i felt like i gave 200 percent to this i feel good about this you know? No, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, guys, holy crap, it's been two hours. I know, huh? It's been two hours. Dragon we unfortunately... And we could go on. We could keep yeah, going. we unfortunately have Those to wrap up. I have, an, I, 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 ha I have another interview coming up, and I'm like, oh my I god, know, I'm going to start running late for this sorry one. Sorry about that. No, no, this was such a good talk. I'd love to get yeah. you guys back on, though, for real. Yeah, um, this well, is definitely. This was good. This is like a wealth of information. Before well, we finish, though, I always... Before we finish, though, I always finish on a strong suit, and that yeah. is, um, you know, as much as this is a podcast where we really promote you and your work, it is also a nice learning tool for anyone new that's watching. Yeah. So yeah. with that in mind, for anyone that's new that is maybe struggling with just getting going, just the, the very start of it, just getting started, what type of advice would you offer that person to help them get motivated just to go? Um, all right, I'll just say um, do it. Um, I'm from the old school of like, um, I, I, I'm always buzzed, bothered by when I see people asking people almost like permission to do something. And I'm just like, just, just do it. You know, I'm, I'm a rebel. I love that, 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 that the fact that, you know, you need to just do the artwork. You are, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm speaking from the artist standpoint, but it, this could also reflect on writers too. I just think that by you sitting there and constantly asking committee, um, whether or not you should do something, 
um, it's just it, I, I, immediately that's setting a weird tone. I think the thing is that you already know what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. Just do it. Just do it. And then see what happens. That's how you'll really learn. Because what happened is it's, 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 a, it's a journey. You know, it's, it's you know, for, and that's why I'm going to show something on my own YouTube where I'm going to show the journey from my first comic to where that's I'm cool. at now, where it's like you can see the growth of my work and I'm still growing. I'm still learning new stuff, new things about myself, about my artwork. So, yes, in a short word, just do it, do it, do it. Don't get into the committee whole mindset or whatever. Just you just do it. <laughs> be, be, be a rebel. <laughs> be a rebel. <laughs> Oh boy, advice for people looking to create their own comic. There's there's so much. Um I think the biggest thing you have to understand is that well, okay, two things. First, for the love of all that is holy, pay your artist. <laughs> I can't believe that has to be said in this day and age, but I have seen so many people say, uh, go up to artists and say, Hey, can you draw this for me for free? I'll pay you an exposure. No, get banish that thought right from your head. The second thing I would say is don't be afraid to fail because you probably will. Yeah. But it's okay. I mean, once, you know, I, I cannot begin, like, this project, um, like, 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 like w w when, when we have this narrative, uh, we have this narrative about, like, the creator, mm -hmm. and, like, you see it in all these, like, biopics about the, you know, about these, like, in famous entertainers and these famous people, like, there's this moment in near the beginning of the movie where everything just sort of clicks and falls into place and then it's off to the races that doesn't happen like that is that is a lie propagated by hollywood because they are a short for time and they want to get to the important part that they mm -hmm. think is important where you know the, the the creator has the fall from grace and has to redeem themselves it's it's a marathon not a sprint Yes, and yeah, like that, that. that that first part of the, the that first part of the movie, like the the like the, the narrative always the you skip over years of suffering and yep. pain and misery, and it yep. sucks. It does. Mm -hmm. Like like yes. when you start when you're starting off, it is terrible, and yes. you feel hopeless and awful. But. If you keep going, if you dig your heels in, if you just keep sending those uh, pitch letters, eventually <laughs> yes. something will happen, yes. and it will be the most wonderful thing ever. And you'll find you'll find a artist as uh, awesome as Frankie. Or, no, that is awesome. You know, yeah, you guys you have will, like. You will. You guys have like such a remarkable thing going on. I love how you both like feed off of each other. <laughs> it's, it's 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 awesome. I can't wait to to check out. Uh, issue one uh, and you guys have such a workload ahead of you i can't wait to get you guys back on for future issues when you run them when you drop them uh and everything yeah. in between frankie matt thank you guys coming on you know for coming on here breaking this down and everything in between guys Thanks, it is man. new comic book day right here is the link to this campaign yes. treat yourself yes. treat yourself to picking this yes. up today and if you can't yes. afford to back it share it yeah. word of mouth is free yes. share it on twitter share it on facebook digital digital copy is available Yes. We, need yeah. to get, yes. we need to get Cody a digital one for the zero issue. What about that? <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 So and now, uh, Jeremy Deal, <laughs> been a great two hours listening about Kaijus and Cowboys. Thank you for hanging out with us the entire time, Jeremy, for real. This has been such a blast. Right I appreciate on. you guys for coming on. Everyone out there, have a fantastic Take Wednesday, care, but most importantly, keep it geekly. Keep that art flowing. Keep it Kaiju and Cowboys, baby. <laughs> Create